Hi, this is Anna from the Bubble Love Spun Show, and make sure you like and subscribe all of our videos because we have a lot of great content. You're gonna love it. Hit the bell so you get notified when there's a new video, and enjoy the show. Stop. <laughs> Uh, we are, Blitz will get, I feel really good because Blitz is on the other side. So I know we'll, I know we'll be instantly on. What, there you go. <clears throat> did, did Jay already leave? No, I'm in Lummy seat. I don't see, I don't, I don't see you there. I'm looking right there. I think oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. It's Blitz, it's the Blitz. It's, uh, uh, the screen, the, the screen configuration's a little messed up. Blitz, I got no, you on. Dan, Dan scooted over and is next to Steve. Okay, but like, oh, Dan's working on the computer. Dan, oh, I, I was, I was sorry, Bubba. I was uh, helping Steve get online. I don't know if Steve needs to read chat. He, I, you know, Steve can't handle chat. Yeah. Jay, He'll get chat cancer quickly. He will. Steve will fucking track. It. We'll be fighting a guy by the end of the night. He'll be calling on Iggy every day. <laughs> <laughs> but I can block people. Yeah. <laughs> now the other thing you got to do, Dan, because you're very camera friendly, and so is Jay, is you have to take Steve's microphone and put it to the right side of his mouth. Okay. Exactly. Not to the Anna. Because yeah, yeah the, so he can so he can see his so he can see his pretty his prettiness. Yeah. And then show him where the, the screen is over there. Yeah, so then can... show him where the screen, and then tell him to take his bottle of water and move it because it's fucking it. It's fucking the state of the Diacos. Now, is this the state of the Diacos or is this the Diaco round table? It's, it's your call. Well, I know, but it's, it's like about... state of the union. There's no real state of the union this year, so why don't we make it state of the Diacos? <laughs> the state of the Diacos. Okay, sure. Okay, but now we all, we all, everybody get, everybody get is your Diacos shit. or Diacai? Someone said that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard of Diacos. <laughs> Well, technically, your name is not plural. It's it's singular. Actually, it was back in the day. It was Diakos, apparently, and it's uh, apparently not even Italian in origin. It's Greek in origin. Did and you get mad, Dan, and make it singular because you didn't want anybody else to fucking share the, 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 cra the craziness? Uh, I didn't have anything to do with it. You know how they love to shorten names when you come to America. So back at least back in the day, do you guys now know? You have, do you, you guys have? know who the first Diaco was? My grandmother. Uh, that was, came from that came from wherever you guys came from. Yeah, she came from Calabria. Stephen actually applied for Italian citizenship recently, and so got all of the documentation. Steve's so when, retired, he's going to Italy. <laughs> he wants to be able to travel freely whenever he wants without regard to antibody testing. Steve, are you going to talk at all today, buddy? I'll say a thing or two. I'm trying to get all dialed in. He's over locked here. up. He's, is he locked he's up? So he's distracted. He's, so he's, he's reading. He's, he's reading. He's, 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 so right so right <laughs> he's like the time that I rearranged his shit on his desk. And oh. you, uh, Steve, were you were you going to be <laughs> Steve? Were you mad or? Were you were you close to being unglued, or you just knew it was me? I knew it was you, but it still was like he was too still much. unglued. It was too much. <clears throat> did did was it mad? Were you mad? I wasn't mad. I just was like uh, uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable when things are <laughs> out Jay, of their sorts. Jay, did he talk to you about it afterwards? If it would have been anyone else other than you or Rob Adams, there would have been blood. Well, Rob was behind it. I know. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> that's why it was okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what if Jimmy Clevis had done it? Uh, Jimmy gets away with a lot. He I did, get I did. But he would know yeah. better. See, Jimmy wouldn't intentionally taunt him like that. No, Jimmy's really like, you know, he just, yeah, you're right. I'm only the, I'm the only asshole that would do that. And I'm, you know what, like and quite frankly, buttons. and quite frankly, Steve, I'm sorry for it. <laughs> no, you're not. It's, it was funny. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was really, I was just bored. Jay was all up into some legal shit and I was just bored and I had to go do something. For those of you who don't know what he's talking about, Bubba flipped everything in Steven's office upside down. Steve likes everything meticulously in its place. Like even the labels face in the same way. And so he literally put his chairs upside down down his everything that was on his desk was on the floor it was complete Steven's, chaos uh, steven's office when uh, his lawyer office when they were at the D bank of america building looked like literally a template for like a show office oh yeah like, it was you like know, a movie set like, caviar you know, like, uh, tacos with a thousand bits thank you caviar it was literally like if they were going to show hey if you uh, rented this space this is what a real fucking cool office would look like you know and no it just doubt. stayed and nobody ever touched it yeah. Like a model home. Exactly. <laughs> he had his uh, I Oscar didn't spend a lot of time in there. No, Ken, I don't know if I ever saw you there three times. <laughs> <laughs> it was so well you uh, it was it was so well uh, kept because he was rarely in there. It was staging, all staging. Yeah. 
All right, so this is the State of the Diacos with uh, Jay, Dan, and Steve, and we've never done this before. Some people are calling it the Diaco Roundtable. Uh, Jay said he'd like for it to be called the State of the Diacos. It really doesn't matter. I've ne- I have known the Diacos now. What, Dan, I met you first. Was it 97? At the, at the end of 98. It was the fall of 98. All right, fall of 98. And then I'm trying to think about who I met next. I think it was probably Steven. Well, um, it could be. Yeah. And, and I think so. It was Steve. And then Jay came around later because... It's probably Steve at the dollhouse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we actually came in with the uh, boxing. Yeah. Oh, with China Chin Smith. Right. China <laughs> right. Chin Smith. We got to get into all that oh uh, here momentarily. How about the time, Steve? Just first question goes to you. Tell me about the time that you negotiated or with Donald Trump uh, on a boxing promotion with China Chin Smith. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Steinbrenner, George Steinbrenner, the old man, right? A uh, friend of the family. He Which, got by the way, did you know us. Mark Tate uh, rep- was his personal in- attorney? And that's 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 Tate's deal. That's he was, crazy. He was Steinbrenner's. He was the only guy that Steinbrenner let have long hair. I got one better. Did you know that Steve <laughs> represented Steinbrenner when he put his bid in on Tampa Stadium on, on the Tampa Buccaneers? Stadium, on excuse the Buccaneers. me, on the Buccaneers. Oh, for real? For real. So go Donald Trump first, then go Steinbrenner. All right, so go ahead, Steve. Tell the story. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just wanted to give you some evergreen behind. Well, anyway, George Steinbrenner uh, set me up with Donald Trump. We were trying to... Now, to... is George friends of your dad? Yes. So that's that's how the meeting yeah, was. Dad, dad yes, but he right. and I became friends, too. Um, he really mentored me as a young guy. We'd go to lunch all the time. It was just surreal that that was my young professional life. It was just crazy. We'd go to the old Malio's. I mean, the old Mario's on Dale Mabry. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. So we were we were friends. He got behind my boxing. He said, I, I want you to go to New York. I want you to meet with Showtime. I want you to meet with That's HBO. when you were promoting a guy named China Smith here locally, right? Yes. Just to give everybody some backfill is what yes. we're talking about. We had been promoting for years. Um, we had gotten finally to the level of trying to get to the network's attention. We had Steinbrenner behind us. It was it was happening. The wind was behind our sails. And he had a meeting with Trump in New York as well as Showtime and HBO. And so I met with Trump. We go into his office. I was with my uh, African-American partner who was in his 60s at the time. Henry Grooms? Yes. That's yes. It. Henry. How about that? No, uh, no. Nah. Rest in peace, Henry. Yes, yes. And so we go in there. Wait, and has he died? No, he's walking wounded. No, no, he's around here somewhere. <laughs> oh, is he? <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm he sorry. will never die. He looks like he was going to die 20 years ago. He looks like he was dying when he was a corner man. He will never die. He was going to die when China got knocked the fuck out. I died that night. We all died that night. But Bubba, he was... He was paralyzed and walked again. Like he was paralyzed in a football injury and and was told he would never walk again. Henry? And he got up and Henry, walked again. Yeah. yeah, he's a he stud. played collegiate and Real. some pro ball. All right, mm-hmm. so you're with Henry Grooms. So we're in there, and you guys represent a boxer it, named China Smith. I think he's undefeated at this time. Is yes, he not? heavyweight. Yes. I'm all suited up. This is the big meeting. It's the same. It was the Trump Tower. Same office. He's still in. To, well, just, since he just Little recently purple moved jersey out. with a hundred dollars cash. Oh thank man, you. thank oh, you. Oh my God, what's up? So anyway, in walks the secretary. She says, come on back. We go into his big office. It was a huge office. And we sit down, and he's there with his daughter. And she's on his lap. She was young at the time. And he's just a loving father. And, he, and he's like, okay, sweetheart, i got to meet with these men, meet these gentlemen. And then he excuses her. And then the phone rings, and it's Melania. And he gets on the phone. Oh, turns, Donald. He was. Oh, oh, Donald. Donald. It Donald. was like that. And he's oh, so Donald. cheesy. Oh, train. He's like, oh, you're doing hair and makeup. Oh, okay, baby. Oh, I love you too. I can't. Yeah, and he turns into the cheesiest boyfriend. Loving dad. Right. Out. Cheesy boyfriend. Hangs up the phone. And then he looks over at us and he goes, can you believe a guy like me from Queens is... I don't. Can you say that? Yeah. yeah. Is banging a girl, you know, like that. You can that. say fuck. fuck. Fuck on a girl. He said fuck. He said, can, can you believe a guy from Queens like me is fucking a girl like that? And we're like, and he threw a magazine across the desk and it landed right in front of us with her on the cover. Now, do you think that the dad. <laughs> Tell him why he said, you know do why you're here? Do you think I haven't that, gotten to that part. Do you think the doting dad and the hot model girlfriend was part of a negotiation deal? Was it a dog and pony show or was it just his, just the way he rolls? I just think it's the way he rolls and it's just you saw all these different personalities in this in this. Oh my God, this country girl, five, uh, 4,000. Yep. Thank wow. you. Nice. The, the, the state of the Diacos raking it 
get in. And T Sharpie, oh, nine resubs. I need a sub. So guys. anyway, so oh then, by the way, let me stop. Uh, let me stop programming yeah, right Dan now. Doctor Dan needs a sub. Doctor Dan Diaco needs somebody to. Are you signed on? I am signed on. All right, because I think if you're signed on, they can uh, blitz your microphones on uh, as well if you need to participate. I don't know how the sub game goes. But Please participate, Blitz. Yeah, Blitz. Don't uh, is he over there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. Chime in, Willie, if you like. Or uh, now, how does a, a sub work, uh, Blitz? If Dan signed on, when and he and he's begging for a gifted one, how does it work? <laughs> so uh, the guy that flew, the guy that drove up in a pista needs a, a five dollar free sub, right. please. I just realized I just ran <laughs> out. I don't. I don't Steve has no idea what sub means, by Bl the way. Blitz, how does that work? Can somebody throw in one? Somebody can gift him a sub. Specifically, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. specifically. Okay. Oh, okay. Just JJ like Charger yeah. 23. Thank you for the gift he sub. Just look at that. Ah. JJ Charger, Pinellas County. Okay, so you're in New York. You're in Donald Trump. <laughs> I've lost the entire you know, we all, like, momentum every, of every, this story. Every one of us has ADHD. I'll have to keep us on track. No, no, I got this. I got this. So. By the way, Jay, next question goes to you, so get ready. Now okay. he's, you know, Esquire with 15 subs. Braggados, pimping, like, look at me. This is my girlfriend. We're like, wow, that's incredible. She's she's beautiful. And so then he changes gears again, and he goes, so you guys know why you're here, right? And I said, yes, sir. We're here to talk about boxing, look at your venues. We're really excited. He's like, no, no, no. You know why you're here, right? And I said, uh, to, I mean, uh, fights? And, and he's like, no, you're here because Mr. Steinbrenner asked me to see you. That's why you're here. <laughs> 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 and uh, wow, man, that was like he cut me down real right. quick. But then he flipped it again. He was really gregarious. He was generous. They they sent us off in his limousines to the casinos in Atlantic City at the time. And we looked at all the different venues. We also did have meetings with Showtime. Got a commitment from them to do a fight, and they and it was like this whirlwind weekend. We also had the had opportunity Russian hookers peeing on them the whole weekend. It was awesome. to do the Tyson Holyfield. I think fight. Dan's projecting at this juncture. But I know that's weird. <laughs> the Tyson Holyfield fight, right? And uh, it, it was after the ear biting incident. It would be the rematch, and nobody could get that placed. And they said, if you guys can get twenty you, million Daddy. dollars and Florida to do it, you'll get the fight. And, wow, and Steinbrenner ended that. up giving us twenty million dollars to do that fight. And it was all but Jeb Bush that stopped it from happening. I forgot what? that, Stephen. Yes. What? 100%. Yes, Holyfield Tyson 2. So so Holyfield Tyson 2 was supposed to happen in Florida. Yes. With your with your promotion. Yes. Yep. You got, Steve's the boss. You, you got, see why. Yeah, you yes. got you went and got twenty mil from, from Papa from Papa George. Yes. And then how did Jeb shut it down? Just the state of it, Florida? It, it, it wasn't gonna hit they would not license it through the boxing commission. It ended up being in like Iowa or something crazy, some weird state finally yeah, uh, after approved the first, it. After the first that, fight, that was he was tough. a pariah. You know, you couldn't get you couldn't get Tyson uh certified tough. in a state. And it turned out to be fine. The fight was fine. We would have made so much money. And we had to it's pitch massive. it to uh, his his people, George's people. And I remember I was so excited that George scolded at me in the middle of the meeting. You're too excited. You're too excited. I'm going to tell your father. You're too excited. <laughs> like, wow. Okay. I'm sorry. I just $20 million. <laughs> oh, so, and well, tell him about putting the offer in the Buccaneers when you were, what, 28? We were young, 29? and uh, he, he made an offer for, um, if I remember correctly. When, when Culver House was selling, right? right. Before, yes. Before he had the passed place. away. <laughs> right. Hugh. The trust was selling, and uh, we've he valued the team, all his team of accountants and all his people at $150 I bet million. you Tate was part of that. He might have been. He, he very well might have been. All right, so they, they evaluated it at $140 million? 150. 150. And he said, I'm going to throw another $25 million as community pride. That's what he called it. And he offered 175, and they came in at like what, almost 200. 192. 192. It was, almost, yeah. it was I and, think. And it turned out to be, you know, they stole Worth a it. billion dollars, like yeah. five years but, later, or ten years. Yeah, years. that would have been, you know, a different trajectory in our lives. We but, would have been just not really. Know. I mean, Daddy Joe stayed on. No, but you know, Steve, <laughs> yes, Steve would have been doing sports oh, entertainment yeah. law. I mean, we would he would have just literally purchased the Buccaneers for for Steinbrenner. I mean, he's the one that put the bid in formally with Steve. Wow. That That's when he was doing you know sports and never, entertainment law. You, you know what I never understood is, and I know that their facility now is second to none, and this is probably, I'm talking about the Buccaneers training mm -hmm. facility, and I'm talking about the old Sombrera, as you guys are very familiar with. You probably, as kids, went there, you know, yeah, every home time, game. Every <laughs> time. <laughs> right. I mean, every that's where time. your dad's. I mean, he, he, your dad was day one doc, team doctor of circa 1976. Yeah, and what we would do, Bubba, for every game for like literally right. almost 20 years, so when they, every Sunday we'd go to the game, and then we'd have to meet dad at the, at the wall on the sidelines. And he'd reach over, 
and we'd have to kiss him in front of 60,000 people, which we didn't mind, but it's just that we were Italians. We'd just give him all a kiss. He would hand us two programs and a, two handfuls worth of gum. And it was a tradition that every time we would do that, then we'd go into the stands, we'd eat and, and drink whatever magazine. we want, and you know, the magazine that goes with the game. Yeah. Right. And after the game, we would go around to the locker room and wait by the fence. And after about 15 minutes, he'd dad would come around. out and he'd pull us into the locker room. And we were going into the locker room as like 10 year olds. Every Seeing like Vinny, Vinny and, them and all. you know, all it up. was Leroy actually Selman, Leroy, Leroy Selman, Selman to, Batman Woods, yeah, exactly. um, the, the original guys, Cecil Johnson, Airtight Ski Pole, the thousand bits. It Thank was, you, Joe. it was, uh, so the my, most incredible surreal thing. When they, when they said, okay, we're going to blow up the big sombrero, we're going to build Ray J beside it. And then we're going to, you know, now remember guys, even when, even when they blew up the big sombrero and they put the new stadium, they still practiced at the shithole for the longest time. Yep. Oh, yeah. Right? Right yes. over yep. the One park. fucking near place. It was a shithole. The weights were rusty. Oh, yeah. It smelled like mildew. It so, smelled like a cheap, like our high shitty school. motel was, in, was, in like yeah. middle the, the Florida. One, the one good thing that the sombrero had was, you know, the press tower was super high up, and it was, and then when they knocked the whole thing down, that was the last thing they knocked down. You know how, remember, it was on big fucking yep. concrete stanchions? Yep. Yep. I didn't, I was always thought it would be kind of neat if they would build the practice facility right there, and that would be the general manager's office and stuff overlooking the fields. You that'd know, be a great office. See, can you imagine? See, I was thinking oh, that they, that'd be awesome. They, they, you know, they were, but I think they kind of really needed it for parking, did they not? Yeah. I mean, for, you yep. know, well, that's what they used and it And they for. took and that old mall over. Remember Tampa Bay Mall? Yeah. Yeah, so that's where they made the facility what, in that whole what, area. When you guys were growing up, I don't know, it was about a month. What, Danny, when would Airtight we... Airtight ski pole with a thousand bits. Thank you, Thank Joe. You. When did we go to the car show? A month ago? Yeah. Okay. Well, Three weeks. Well, we were live on YouTube, and then we went all throughout your neighborhood, and Dan gave me the history of all your deal. But when you guys used to go to the mall... Country girl with two thousand bits. Thank you, country. Completed the cu- with hype train bubble with ten seconds left. Thank you. <laughs> what mall? What was the What was the go-to mall for you three? Gateway, Gateway mall. mall. Which one was that? That was the one on 83rd and, and 9th Street. And then the, Was we it were, a real mall, though? No. It was a crap mall. And then so the fancy bad. mall was Pinellas Square Mall. Yeah. And, Tyrone, and Tyrone. But we would go to Pinellas or Tyrone. Those are yeah, the nice Yeah, but ones. Tyrone was way far away, really. Yes, yeah, yeah. it was. So you Pinellas know. was the one we'd usually go to. And in Tampa, it would it be... It was the Tampa Bay Mall we, back then, The Tampa then, Bay Mall was the new near, mall. You know, uh, was the one down by the stadium. The one yeah. where the, the playing the, the uh, field is now. Yeah, their, so their sports training. And remember facility. back in the day, your mom could literally, you three could probably drop you guys off at the mall. You guys would go to the arcade, fuck around, because you don't have to worry about anybody. Yeah. Oh, my God. We could ride our bike mom, to the one at the we block. We pay, at we seal 10,000 bits. bits. Thank you, my Thank friend. Thank you. I mean, you know, we And I, also, Dingleberry Stink with 1,000 bits. Thank I, you. And you didn't have to really worry about somebody, you know, fucking, you know, uh, abducting you and chopping you up back then. No. Well, no, we, we had those stories, but mom, the whole rule was don't talk to strangers. And so the same thing should hold true for kids. But Danny and I, you know, but it was just like different times because Dan and I got cornered and like got like pretty much beat up at uh, bowling alley. They didn't hit us. I mean, I keyed key your car. car and, and it turned guy, into this whole big. The, oh, the, oh, the, the bowling alley down by Northeast. Druggies, Druggies, Druggies versus Jocks. Yeah, well, we played, Bubba. Circa oh, yeah. 1983. When, no, when me, when we were on the team with Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, same place. Same place. And Dan throws the ball two handedly. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you got to watch that. Jay, Dan. Jay, tell me about your BMX career. Um, it was short lived. <laughs> I was a little guy. <laughs> and, uh, I was too small to be on any team sport. So the only thing I could find that I was good at was. Because you, you could pedal the shit out of the bike, right? I could right? pedal the shit out of a bike, and size didn't matter very much, and I was pretty fast, and so, you know, I've always liked, as a kid, I wasn't really a team sport guy, I was more of an individual sport guy. Jay marches to the beat of That's his why own surf, and, you know, I, you know, I mean, he hates But Jay always had the coolest but, gear, though, But do you know why, like though? His, yeah, his his bike was but, but, equipment. The reason was... Bubba, he's always, even when he was a little punk... Always had the that nicest BMX bike shit. Was the best, the nicest shit. The he would wait and he's wait still got until the he nicest got it. shit. Absolutely correct. He I is think Captain Equipment. Listen, I'm telling you right now, Dan. I think he's got nicer shit than you do. He does. There's no doubt. <laughs> he does. I'll man. say it right he now. Does. Absolutely. Just, Everything Everything miles. Hey, Dan. The last time I checked, you got his hand-me-down eight thousand dollar helmet that you Everything. bought for like half price. Yeah. <laughs> hand-me-down <laughs> everything. Hand-me-down Willie. That's what he is. Yeah. Whatever. Now speak. Now, so tell me your BMX, and then we're gonna talk about hand-me-downs. Tell me your BMX. So the, the reason I did it is because I was little. I mean, I went to high school. I was four foot 10, 98 pounds. So I wrestled 98 pounds. It's the only sport where yeah. you could get parity. I was a badass little 98 pounder. I was nine and two. I either pinned or got pinned. 
Right. So I just treated it like being in a fight with Steven, and I did pretty well at it. But the next year I grew seven inches in five months, and then I was a strangly little 135. And you remember 135? Slamming feet. 135. 10,000. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God. The, the 135s were like the Eric Grahalis. <laughs> they fucking were roll like little studs. grown men, right? Yeah. They were like 155, right. walk yeah. around uh, weight. They'd cut 20 shave. pounds. Yes. They're shaving. My, I didn't have any hair near my nuts yet. <laughs> You and were 135, he, he 135. They were 55 through 135. Yeah, I was right. so horrible. I was the fighting didn't matter anymore, and so I graduated six foot one. Really? Yeah, I grew. I think you the, are the tallest of the three. Years, are you not? Yeah, yeah, yeah he I is. Am. By the way, Jay can ride the shit out of a bike. Still, I mean, I mean he, he is make it so. Fly. Good at it and can do jumps and things that, that you wouldn't believe that lanky guy could get up there and do <laughs> some sideways. Thank you. Thanks for the comment. And stuff. That who's the most uh, one through three? Who's the most athletic and who's the least athletic? Uh, we all have, uh, honestly, um, I think Steven probably has the most natural athleticism, Dan, don't you think? Yeah, probably. Um, I would say, though, if you rate, rate sports, rate a uh, ranked sports, you know, I'm best at surfing. Danny would be best at like water skiing. Danny was an excellent slalom skier, exceptional. And Wasn't very smooth. Snowboarding. snowboarding. I think I'd probably be the best. Danny was second best. <laughs> no way. Steve dude. hated it. No way. Yeah. He was yeah. on his knees and his ass I the ski, whole day. I ski. And, um, uh, and I was good at water skiing. But Steve's always pretty good at just about anything. He could play ambidextrous. He kicks left footed, but he. Anyway, what do you bat left handed? Golf right handed. Golf right handed. He like throws the ball right handed. He, he goes both ways. Yeah, he surfs right footed. Now, okay, so the question th this is a this is a, a kind of a selfish question, but it was a question that was given to me by an insider. Which one of you three are most like me? Me. <laughs> No, who's who's that? Dan. <laughs> that Dan. I would say it, Dan. it is Dan. What I would say it's Dan. Yeah, Dan. It's absolutely me, Bubba. Yeah. You, you, you think? guys are two I, peas in a pod. We both have a screw loose. I mean, come on. We really do. We, 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 we really, really do. I can play really mine do. on a head injury in college, and yours is because your mom was jumping on a trampoline yeah. when you were just a fetus. I, I had 14 concussions before yeah, I came so out. I had one big one, so. But now <laughs> that you, you know both. us so well, Bubba, wouldn't you say I'm close? I'm right there, right? <laughs> to me? Yes. Yeah, and some things. I mean, like, there's, like, there, yeah. Here's the difference. And, and Here's the Bubba. difference, Bubba. Hold on. Here's the difference, Bubba. The difference is, is that right <laughs> before you're about to do something stupid, you ignore that little voice in your head, and Stephen listens to it. I was going to just say something similar to that, which is <laughs> nah. that you guys both act and then think. And Steven and I tend to think and then act. I don't... Jesus, I wish I was better at that. <laughs> I, I wish I was better at that. Think of an excuse. Steve said he wouldn't be retired right now if he was a little better at that. <laughs> Although that would be... I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking. I'm, I'm trying to be more like that. So, Jay, t tell us about your mullet. Tell us subs, about your mullet, Jay. So it was, you know, I guess early 80s and New Wave was the deal. <laughs> And I thought that having a kind of a spiky little new wave. It know, really wasn't a mullet, though. I it mean, was, it was, was like, like, really, like almost a like, crew was, cut with long hair in the it back. It was like the guys from. Uh, it looked like actually uh, David Bowie. Yeah, it was like David Bowie. It looked like that kind of, you know, a Ziggy Stardust kind of like weird. The really, without the makeup, like really without goofy, the makeup. Yeah, like kind of a David Seagulls. Bowie kind of deal. Flock of Seagulls, like a, Billy yeah, Idol. Kind of, yeah, it was. It was. I was trying to be like New Wave. It so we would just stupid. beat him up extra, just for, <laughs> just for looking like, like that. Jamie get his much. ass kicked, and then Steve would go, and here's one for looking like a Thompson Twins motherfucker. No, no, <laughs> <exactly. true. laughs> Steve used to beat me up every day on the way home from school, and he would say to Pity, "Hey, Pity, you want to see Jay cry?" Uh, he made good. No, not really. He's like, okay, well, I'm gonna do it anyway. All right. So this question so goes, Florida Stanley with 26 subs. Oh thank my you. God! Thank you. This goes out to each subs. and every one of you, and we'll start with Stephen. Which of your two brothers was meanest to you? Stephen uh, was meanest to everyone. Now hold on, Dan, Dan. Stop fucking it. It's Steve first. Oh, I'm sorry. Dan, you yeah. cut every you question cut first. Line. Have you realized? I'm that? Sorry. <laughs> hold on. Like, so Jay, say it again. Microphone. Say it again. Jay, first, say it again. First act, <laughs> Willie. Uh, no matter. Hey, no matter whose question it is, Dan's gonna answer it, and then we'll get through it. Jay's gonna say this. Dan, Dan, tell me about Jay's BMX career. Well, I'll tell you. You know, he was he was 98 pounds, and he couldn't do anything but fucking wrestle. So he's real good bike. And he, had a fucking yeah, he can push his 98 pounds faster than anyone right, else. Steve, push yeah, of your two brothers, which one has has been, or was, or is the meanest to you? Uh, meanest. I would say, I you know that's fluctuated over the years, but I would say more recently, I would say Danny. 
Really? Yes. D- Dan, same question to you. We're not going to get too deep into it because it's just a quick question. I want to, yeah, who, which one of these Did two? Did not ever really mean to me. <clears throat> yeah, growing up, Steven was the meanest. True. Jay was a pushover. Right. And I was four years older than Jay, so there was like no chance of Jay doing anything to me as a right. kid. You yeah. know, eventually he got bigger than me, but Although, it took a long time. if I may interject, he is in better shape than you right now. Uh, I don't know what like you mean by better no, shape. No, I don't know what you mean by better shape. I actually do think that I smoke just cigarettes gonna, and drink can monster can energy. I'm just going to fucking further, tell you right now. I, I'm just going to tell you right now, buddy. I've, gri- I've driven... I've gr- I've grabbed Driven? both I've grabbed both of you cores of late, and he's got a little bit tighter of a core than you. He right ain't now. got no tighter core. Okay, than Okay, motherfucker, I'm glad I I'm glad Ribs I don't have don't an opinion. Count, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, I'm I'm glad I I'm glad I'm not the moderator here, and I'm glad I have no say so. I know all three of you fuckers, and I've gra- I've grabbed you t- <laughs> you two lately, and I've done this knowing I was going to bring this topic up here. I've specifically grabbed you in the last two weeks, and I've specifically grabbed him in the last week, and he's a little tighter than I you. I made right him now. grab me actually. Because I'm feeling good about myself. Dan. Actually, Dan, if I'm in full disclosure, Jay came up to me last week and goes, "Feel this shit." And I felt, <laughs> I felt him, and he goes, "Make sure you grease Danny on it because I'm fucking tighter than he is right now." <laughs> <laughs> MTK twos with thirty nine resubs. The real Florida Stanley with a thousand so bits. I'll be in my you, office with fifty bucks and Jay, Brandon the quad with thousand bits. Thank, thank you, you guys. But anyway, Danny, I'm just saying Jay is a little more jacked right now than you are. I think. Uh, back, he is, he's back in the gym. Back, he is. I worked out once last week. Give me like <laughs> another week or two, back, and I'll blow you guys all away. To, Get back in it. Then. Back I mean, to the question should. is: Look at your little arms, dude. You look like Matroni. <laughs> oh, well, oh, 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 there's going to be a Matroni. fight right to fuck now, <laughs> and only Steve could say that. Because he'll take a hack I from him. I would have said that for Steve Ken. If, but if Steve, hold on, Jay. Funny. This this answer this question goes to Jay. Okay. And both the, everybody else shut the fuck up. If Steve and Dan dropped him right now, if they both said "fuck you," that was an out of bounds. Call me Brian Matroni, and they went to go. And they went to hacks. Who would win right now? This very second. I would win the battle, and Stephen would win I the war. I didn't ask Danny you. Danny answered again. Fucking, <laughs> you fucking a J. I did it. Let me ask I you. Dan will answer it. J. Jesus. I said J. Okay. He just heard Brian Matroni. I'm going to answer this question. Still, I'm, still, I'm still on the Brian Fuck. Thing. Donna Waters ball spot with uh, a thousand bits. <laughs> <laughs> J. At question. The house. Right. Go I have, ahead. Stephen works out. Danny doesn't. And Steven has got a mean streak, and Danny doesn't. So I put my money on Steve. At the red. Oh, this is the best. <laughs> Steve doesn't know what that is. He doesn't. We're gonna show, can you show it to him? We will here in a minute. Oh, God. Because oh. I want to do a Diaco Law one. Diaco, Diaco Law, <laughs> where white people and black people can get good help on car on car accidents and other great things. There's no doubt. At Diaco Law. <laughs> Oh, so you're saying right now, Steve takes it. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. I, you know, I, I can't say that I would definitely take it, but I, don't give me, don't and give me the cheap. first shot. And don't. he's cheap. He, Steven and, almost you know, went I'll to hurt somebody. You know, you've been to my office, right? You still remember how beautiful it was? Yeah. So when we were designing it, your recent, the, you're, you're the one we had a meeting in yeah, a week ago. Yeah. 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 So we're about a hundred large into this thing, and our building is a shell. There's nothing in it. There is not a window, not a piece of furniture. There's nothing. It's just been demoed. It's like two months into the project. And so we meet the contractor at the office. At the red house. At the red house. Right. And Stephen was um, very angry. And, and basically the guy was opening up a club at the same time. So it was and a the contractor. Said, the guy yeah. was and the guy thinks, and the guy, he's got he's hands kinda, like lunch boxes, a hundred pound head. He's twice he's like the a, size he's like of twice a, He's like a Jimmy and a half. He's, right. twi- he's twice the size of <laughs> Steven. <laughs> right. And, like and a Jimmy so and Steve's half. saying all these things without saying him. He's like, are you calling me a thief? Are you calling me a thief? You're saying I put my club, I put the money with, with my club? What are you saying? And he turns around and he punches a wall that he just created a drywall and he didn't remember there was cement behind it. So now his knuckles bleeding. And Steven and this guy are in each other's face and it's about to go down. And I get all Jay diplomatic on it and I get this guy to walk it off. And so he's out front, mother f in the world. It was two seconds from going down, and I was like, "Oh my God, Steve, dude, you were gonna fucking jack him in his face, weren't you?" He's like, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, going for the knee. He's got bad knees." <laughs> <laughs> right for the uh, knee. That's, and I'm like, "Oh my God!" He's like, "Once he's down, I destroy him." 
So yeah, <laughs> teeth break calculated. Uh, well, that's the thing. You just gotta find. You gotta find a weak spot. It's the uh, state of the Diacos. Jay, last question to close out the deal. And which of your two brothers were meanest to you? It sounds like they were both dicks to you. Um, it's interesting. Stephen was, but he's my biggest supporter. And I think a lot of what he did in hindsight that I thought was mean was to try to make me a little stronger and tougher. Um, like for example, he made me beat up a kid every week, every day for two weeks, just to prove to myself that just because I wasn't, you know, I was little and I wasn't big that I was still tough. So Steve was brutal on me. When um, you were growing up and now, yeah, Dan, yeah. and now Dan's your partner and he's even more fucking brutal on you. <laughs> every day. <laughs> Not at all. Um, Do you guys ever stare at each other from the from the glass and like flip each other off or like anything like that? No, we usually smile and wave. We usually do like you know come over here real quick or I'll see him and I'll run in his office real quick. <laughs> so that's does, funny. Does, I, that's right. You guys look at do, each now, other. Now, we do, every now and then we do like pull down our pants and do a dong off so like she, he and I can see. Really? Yeah. Dan. Well, Dan. <laughs> by the way, somebody <laughs> asked. But, I can't Dan log in. The water sports spot with a thousand bits. I got it with sixty nine dollars in cash in the real Florida Stanley with a thousand bits. Dan, you are doing a great bitch deal. Oh, a great, a That's great awesome. bitch. Thank you, because I couldn't do it. Anyway, I couldn't either. Were you going okay to say, Steve? Is it okay do those? You no, want me to, right? we need you okay, to. Okay. We need you to. Right, well, well, I can't comment on this thing, but they're asking a couple questions. Like, obviously, I want to say hey to Jimmy Clevis, but they were asking, like, um, who'd been with the most girls? And that would be Danny. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I haven't even got to that yet. But, yeah, I mean, Danny's I mean, been. I you got to learn not to answer the chat questions out loud, thanks. <laughs> no, oh, really? No, no, no. No, Steven. <laughs> I can't chat. I can't respond on it. It's called a typewriter in front it of won't, you. It won't. Keyboard. I'm not logged in. Steven. Yes. You fucking do whatever you want, buddy. You Thank tell, you, buddy. Tell Jay to blow it out his ass. <laughs> oh, this is, hey, no. This is, no this doubt. Is, this is my fucking world. And if you want to answer it verbally, Steve, you fucking answer it verbally. That's oh. Tell 98-pounder with a BMX mullet to shut the fuck up right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dan. I told you. I'm not Dan, logged in. It's Dan, no big deal. Uh, Dan, tell me about oh, how yeah. you shared a room with your Latin teacher in high school. At two? At two, two Brute. At <laughs> <laughs> two, Danny. Hey, 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 this is going to be great therapy for you guys. So, Dan, how the fuck do you end up sharing a room with a Latin Explain teacher? Explain that. Is well, it a, was it a man? Or was it a man or a woman? Honor student. It was a man. All right. And his name was Mr. Blessing. Okay. That doesn't make and, the story better. And he looked like John Lennon in the later years with a handlebar mustache and like a goatee and a long hair. Dan, were you touched? And the way I was talking, touched, it sounds like But it. we went to this Latin like Olympics. At the Red hey, <laughs> Where Latins get touched too. Yeah. <laughs> so you, hold and on. And we so shared a hotel room. Now, in retrospect, it was all fucked up. There's no way this should have happened like this. High school. But high school. I went right, to so this hold on. Did he change it for no, this, is, this is in St. Pete? He did change this it for yes. you, did he? I went, I went to Northeast High. All oh, right. we're going to learn something, Bubba. I didn't even and know. All right, hold on now. You I go went, to Northeast High. I went what, to Northeast what, High. What year were you? I was a senior. You're a senior in high I school. Senior. I was in like Latin five. All right. He loved me. All right. He sure did. Yeah, he, he did. sure did. And, he still okay. sends a Christmas card every year. Sure he does. <laughs> God bless with, with, God a cock, bless with a cock pick. <laughs> <laughs> this is the cock he could have had back my in 83, uh, bitch. My mom opens it. So <laughs> All right. picture he so, has in his altar so, so, Mr., so Mr. Blessing is your Latin teacher, and yeah. you guys are going out of town for a Latin five off or something? Right. So it's like a Latin competitions with like, you know, you do like tests and Olympics right. and stuff like that. I and, won, bu and butt fuck and you know, all won, the good stuff. I literally won the three-legged race. That's what I <laughs> oh, yeah. won. The fucking three-legged race. Dan, Which was so, a race with him and Mr. Blessing yeah, and Dan's so, third leg. Right, exactly. <laughs> it was his cock and Dan's one leg. Exactly. So, it was like six legs. So Dan, <laughs> one so ass. you guys go out of town, and where is considered out of town? It was in Florida, but it was a few hours away that we had to actually spend the night. What was your mom thinking? She never oh, thought twice about it. I mean, and, and you know what? My yeah, mom. We had a pedophile amongst us as a kid, and, so my oh, mom didn't know. know anything about it. She's I know. Fucking, He's asexual, she didn't have Dan. Gaydar or He's pedophile asexual. Dar. She had none of that shit, dude. No, but none of no really, idea. Hold on. Church hold on. lady. None of our moms really did because you didn't really. You, know, no, you, you really didn't. It. My mom sent me off with, with men before. Yeah, like, dude. You, you got touched. We all got no, touched. No, I didn't. I never got touched. Sure, you I was too fat. No question. They didn't want to touch the chubby kid. You got they touched. wanted the fucking skinny Italian that was smart. <laughs> they didn't want the fat white guy. <laughs> All right, so hold on. You're out of town with Mr. Blessing. Oh, Are you in a hotel? Yeah. And you're a senior. Yeah. 
And d- did anything happen? The only thing weird that happened was he did change in front of me once. Did he really? Yeah. Like I never heard naked. that. With his con- full naked? Full naked, yeah. Was he Danny, cut? that was, was an invitation. No, huh? Did you take was it? Cut, no, Dan? fuck no. I didn't was know anything. Cut? Did he bend over? Could you tell? Did he bend over? Danny, could you tell? Was he cut? Dan's getting shotgunned with stuff. Did he have a circumcision? Was he circumcised? Oh, wow. Was he know. cut? <laughs> I feel like, hold on. I feel like it's just family feud and Steve's going, was he cut? Steven, was he cut? Know. I don't know. I don't remember. Steve's I wasn't, really I into circumcision. I didn't uh, like look closely. I just like. Well, I'm just saying how. He did it like, you know, right in front of me. Dan, and that I, is an invitation really from a pedophile. I know it is. I know it is. I, in retrospect. All right, now, Dan, hold now, on. Let me tell you something. That pr- same teacher, Mr. Blessing, was my favorite teacher he maybe of awesome. all time. He was awesome. He was so, incredible. It may have been innocent. It was just a little bit weird. All right. Yeah. So but he never like climbed into bed with me or like, like peeked yeah. in the yeah. shower. Danny's, Danny's had really never, sex. Danny's really been me, sexually assaulted by he, men. He, he never made me feel. Oh, he didn't do that. He right, never Dan? made me feel uncomfortable. Danny, I mean, you've even, been sexually even, assaulted. Well, I had a, a few I, times. I had a guy that tried to touch me a few times. Yeah, <laughs> that's how hot you <laughs> are. Even men, even straight my, men want you. One of my mom's like old teaching friends from Philly who ended up getting actually charged with sexual uh, uh, misconduct with a minor how boy. How did he touch you? Um, you know, he's like, he touch your wiener. <laughs> yeah, he tried to touch it a couple times. How old? The were first you? time wasn't uh, enough for Dan to run. He made it, it to my thigh, Bubba, and yeah, I never but, went with the guy anywhere it's again. Dead Jason, so I'm I jumping by ninety eight there. Wasn't it on a boat? Yeah, yes. but he had a ski boat. He had a Corvette. He'd hey, take Dan, a gambling, let's, let's go drink. skinny skiing, and he'd get him drunk with like four other boys, and they'd go and naked got to the point skiing. Where, so, but, you guys would, I, eat, so, you guys would, he, he'd bring out the Zima, and you guys would right, fucking, right. and you guys would be sucking down Zimas. He was trying to groom. But when I was a little older, Bob Lucarini was a good friend of mine. And lived up there. He's a lawyer now. He's a shredded guy. He's really cool. He, could, he, he sounds dunk. tough. He was cool. Bob Lucarini, yeah, he'd kick your ass. He's a great wrestler. He was a good guy. Who wins between him and Jim Clevis? J- Jimmy, Jimmy Clevis. Clevis. Right. Jimmy wins every time. Yeah, never bet against Jimmy. Nah, no. but, 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 but. I would put Bob in almost any other fight. I mean, he was a great athlete. All right, so Bob anyway, Lucchini. So, so Bob Lucchini figured out Terry from the very beginning. And so <laughs> at one point, he and I would, like, tease Terry and get him to give us stuff and do things for us and just kind of, like, you know, kind of like... You Dan would, would, like, you know, just on. give him the tip. Hey. <laughs> Dan, nice to him to Dan <laughs> you're trying to, to say that you would work, you would the, work, I'd work, the you'd work the deal. You'd yeah, be like, like show shit. him a little ass so that you guys no, could get him. I wouldn't show him ass, but we would just, you know, kind of like pretend like we were all into it until the last second. You know, just so he'd take us to do things. Because he takes his casinos. He takes out to dinner. He was he was, he was like your sugar. He was your sugar pedal. It's called grooming. Done, uh, 17, uh, 17 with $100 cash. Minuteman with 13 subs and Soft Noodle Jones with 1000 Now, did you have to do anything? gay at all? No, I didn't. But, Not that there's anything wrong. No, well, no, what do you call no. gay is the real question. Did you make, <laughs> up, Dan, did you make <laughs> out with lie, At what point does it By the way, gay? is no, all, are, are any reality. of your wives listening to this Who right now? I hope, probably. Probably. I hope not. Probably. I hope not. So, <clears throat> so, Dan, did you have to do anything gay? I mean, no, I've no, I didn't have to do anything gay. And, and, but did it, he want to? At the time, I didn't know what grooming was. He certainly wanted to. I didn't want to. No, but I mean, Danny would like... Terry did. Danny would put on suntan lotion... And you know his well-muscled body with Bob in front of him, <laughs> and go skiing, the and they go like right ski here. naked for the guy. <laughs> now, Danny, That's Danny, Danny would you Danny. really ski naked, Danny? I did ski naked in front of him probably three or four times. Not once. With, with your four, whole, three or four times. Yeah, yeah, but, we would, but we would do it in front of the Say it again, Jay. Which means what, Jay? Ten. <laughs> Ten. Multiply uh, by three but, with but, Danny. But. He would do it. In, we would go to like this nudist colony that was there in Jersey, and we'd ski naked in front of the nudist colony. So it was there was a reason. All right, yeah. Danny. Next question goes to you. Tell <laughs> us. Look, look at that gay guy with those guys in the boat. By the way, it's, <laughs> it is the uh, state of the Diacos. Uh, it's very therapeutic. At the time, again, I had no um, idea I was being groomed. Dan, but it was tell me, grooming. tell me about. Done, done seventeen with a hundred dollars cash. Tell me about your stripping career. Oh, that's oh, the best. The Chip and Dukes. God. I mean, Dan, I mean, All right. I mean, it's Chip and Dukes, not Chip and Dales. The Chip and Dukes. <sighs> yes, that was yeah. it. I, I want to hear about exotic dancer at one I point in my life. Give, me, give, us is, the, give us the years, if you could, please. Which is why I don't judge. Um, it was 1986 <laughs> to 7. Okay. And you're at what? Florida I'm or Duke? Duke? You're I'm at Duke. Duke. You're I'm at Duke. Duke. All right. And it started now, off. How much ass did you get at Duke? I got a good amount for, I mean, for Duke ass. Well, Duke pound ass for is, pound, more than any other college. <laughs> right. <laughs> I did better in medical school at Gainesville. That, Whoa. I slayed it. All right. Okay. So now we're in Duke, circa 86. And, 87, yeah. So, right. um, Is there I'm, an ad in the paper? Or? Exactly. Here's what happened. 
my friend, uh, I had a friend guy, a guy named Madison, who was also a wrestler. He's kind of like Jimmy, really like the skin's too tight for his body. Who One wins between guys. Madison and Jimmy? Jimmy. Jimmy. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> always Jimmy. I know it. That's almost the rib. Is it's always Jimmy. It's always Jimmy. <laughs> no matter who you say, you know. <laughs> Jimmy Cleo's Who wins between one. Kurt Angle and Jimmy? Jimmy. 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 <laughs> Even though really probably Kurt Angle would Kurt kick Angle. Jimmy's ass, really. Oh, but well, still, it's uh, always. Maybe. It's I don't always, know. Maybe, on a good maybe day. not. Jimmy, if you're maybe listening. Maybe not 10 out of 10. Oh, I think I think Jimmy would say Kurt Angle whips his ass. I'm just saying. I think you I don't know. Know. Kurt Angle put him was a, over. But Kurt went, Angle was an Olympiad. Yeah, he was but, a gold medalist. Okay. Well, okay. Jimmy okay. was a Milwaukee Greek. medalist. Yeah, that's that's Jimmy won the state. Uh, but he's the, younger the than him. State games at 30. Yeah. And Jimmy's. Jimmy's really Greek, strong dude. right now. I'd like to see Jimmy's opinion on that. 3,000 yeah. years. Over, over, over. T- Anna's uh, uh, wallered out beaver uh, a thousand bits. <laughs> oh. So, Dan, it's 87. You're in uh, Duke, North right. Carolina. And my friend was mad, and he was a wrestler on Duke, and we were in the same fraternity, Pikas or Pikes, whatever you want to call them. Pike Country Girl 92, the thousand bits. And there was an ad for a bachelorette party. And so he brings it to me. He's like, dude. 200 bucks if you dance this bachelorette party. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> and so we. So you started out at a bachelorette party. Right. And then all of a sudden, word now, spread. How, how much pussy did you get? Well, so oh. Tell what you do. Tell what the end of the end of this thing. By the way, Ramina, 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 Ramina if you're listening, note, I'm not trying to disrespect you or anything like that. This is obviously. <laughs> I don't know if you were alive yet. Was she? No. Okay, she wasn't even no. born. She yet. Was, I think she was an infant. Okay, so go ahead. So you go to the f- ba- the first bachelorette party, right? And so the first bachelorette party is a little cash, but I, I you know, I, I start learning. What do you have like, to do? You, do, you, do, you, do you, I, like do you I, have to- I, dance? I can't even dance. That's the funny thing is I get paid to dance. And I'm the worst dancer in the world. Right. So, but but, but I had they, a decent body. Were they, I was all, a were they all big girls too? No, well, it was a then, sorority. He, they were all hot. They were but all, he had a is, uniform, Bubba. He had best body contest uniforms, which would in you know usually encompass something like zebra skin briefs. With a zebra skin G string underneath it, and then Danny would slowly but surely make his way to that. And Danny, did you tie off your cock? Don't even lie, because that's all. All stri- I've known male strippers, and they tie. What does that and, mean? And they tie off your cock. What, what, I don't even what? know what that means. Danny, what does that mean? What is, is, that, that, is that Romina uh, texting you, Danny? <laughs> Saying, is it really for real? No, was it? Anyway, so. Danny, was um, it Romina? Yeah. So. What um, did she say? Because I do not want to go. I do not want to upset her. She's my no, new I, friend. I, yeah. It's, we don't. It's, this, it's, these are not new stories. We're not to say late. this in a way that it's upsets her. Well, that, what, what's it, upsetting it, about is that? Is it really? Yeah. yeah Everyone knows right. you oh, said that, on. Danny. Send tell Steve that over. Dinner. Send Steve over. He'll fix it. Right. There was that's, that is there's so nothing funny. in that one I think I find right. that anyway, so I started with a bachelorette party it spread we'll talk up more about it another time maybe but it just, wow yeah wow well Danny never uh, like strip uh, stripped uh, it was just no. like you know it was best like body competitions stuff yeah. it, was, it, was it was never a few naked. bachelorette parties a couple sorority parties and then it was um but did you but, tie but, did, but, did you tie off no, I'm tying off you're fucking lying Dude, all, t- guy, all what you mean strippers tie off tying off means what does that mean they tie off your dick no you get one of those, die. You get one exactly. of those. You get no, Danny. You get damage. one of those cock rings, no. and yes, they're, and they're, it fucking makes it makes okay, it hang well, out. Okay, it makes it, even well, my little dick no. looks good with one. Okay, well, no. I don't, Danny I've never, never tried that. one of those. Did you, Dan? No, I I've never even heard of it. Sure Danny, I used either. to host this show at the Red Corvette in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And right? it's snow watered out. For a thousand bits so and cut your girl ninety two a thousand bits and Dunny seventeen seventeen with a hundred dollars in cash. They would do. Thank you, everybody. Listen, listen to this brilliant promotion. This is circa ninety two in Milwaukee, and I'm at, I'm a radio personality at WLUM Hot one hundred two, and they had this little fucking dive bar that might have been this little bit larger than this studio, and it was called the Red Corvette. You, know, can you get any fucking cheesier of a name? That's an awesome <clears> name, the Red Corvette. And on Wednesday nights... Yeah, the little red Corvette would be the cheesier version. They On Wednesday nights, they had the Milwaukee version of the Chip and Chunks or whatever the fuck you guys are called, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 then, and then they opened it up so it was ladies only until, until 11 o'clock. And then 11 o'clock... They let the guys in. Well, right. all the guys wanted to go in there because right. they had just had these fucking Jimmy Clevises and Dan Diacos rubbing their cocks on them. Right, and, and all the girls <clears throat> are warmed up. So, but when I would get there, I would go to the back, like to the manager's office and check in. And they'd give me the wireless mic and they'd be like, okay, Bubba, you know, and I would do like some kind of fucking contest or booty shaking contest or something with these bitches. Well, the strippers, the Dan Diacos were back there counting their fucking ones and talking about all the fucking heavy bitches that were trying to sweat them. And they were... They were undressing, and they all had their cocks tied off. 
<laughs> and I, like, and I, and I after they were the grooming girl, Bubba. And I, and I, <laughs> I was dressed around him. And There's I, nothing gay about and that I, either. And I asked him, no, but they were in the managers, and I go, hey, guys, not for nothing, but why do you fucking tie off your dicks like that? And they're like, oh, it keeps it, it, it makes it look like, you know, it, it keeps it fucking hard. I'm really? like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, learn something well, new just, every day. Well, just for the cheap well, seats, Danny would do these best body contests in Jersey. This is mainly what it was. And that's how I got engaged to Chris. It was one of these trips he won. They would give you a bar tab. They, they, uh, like hot bun contests used to $500. Them, like hot buns would, or hot body? Uh, uh, Dan won a cruise. That I, I, I ended mean, up going on like the cruise. It wasn't like real stripping. I mean, he so, was not a stripper. And, and, you could, and it was in Jersey. You couldn't put your stuff on it anybody. Was, it wasn't no, like that at all. But he was... Was, you know, buff. He was on a stage more like a DJ bodybuilding going, hey, thing. Hey, hey. This is all of us backpedaling right now. For <laughs> but, 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 but it was honestly mostly for That's like a hundred dollar bar though. tab and Bob Lucarini's, you know, approval. Yeah, and he and never Bob won and to Bob. I would get like first and second every time. And switching Danny gears. Got second. <laughs> switching gears, knowing that Odani is listening. First of all, uh, Romina, I wasn't trying to upset you, and you know, I'm just trying to be funny. So, secondly, uh, Jay, tell me about Jane's addiction. <laughs> Um, it was one of those con those those bands when I was a kid. Everyone was Deadheads, and I was really into Jane's Addiction. So I traveled around and saw Lollapalooza at a bunch of different stages, uh, or different cities and and states. And and then Perry Farrell came here one time DJ, and after Jane's Addiction broke up, and a friend of mine was big into the DJ scene and called me up. What was that club? We were at Hyde Club Hyde Park. See, what was that? What was that club? The one with the the redheaded girl used to own it. Uh, off of uh, Howard. Yeah, Hyde Park. It was. Yeah, Hyde Park Cafe. And um, and my friend calls me and says, Perry Farrell wants to go hang out somewhere. And I'm like, what? And I said, how about my house? And so Stephen and Danny and I went to my house and ended up having Perry Farrell come hang out with us for about 12 <laughs> hours. It was the most for real. Um, it was incredible. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. It was really and an we had real. gone. To, Jay had seen him so many times live at all his festivals. Lala Palooza was invented by him. That that was his festival, right, Jay? Yeah, it was oh, his yeah. creation. And so, creation. so Jay was like the biggest fan of his. It was one of the best concerts I had ever seen. Was was Lala Palooza in Birmingham, oh, and it was, uh, it was like a life changing experience. So to then have a whole night with this guy was really he was Surreal. cooler than we could have ever dreamed of amazing uh, and guy. he was really Fun. cool i yeah. mean he was like interacting and, and 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 hanging out with everybody it was it was one of those surreal surreal evenings Steven, i think he digged us right yeah i think did. he really he enjoyed song, the three of us a shitty song but he wrote a song <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> called us Raphael, michael and gabriel gabriel the uh, three archangels i don't he wrote know a if shitty it was, song about it i think the guy from jane's addictions was enamored with steven's brilliant uh, board game idea over over to you Stephen, for for that for that uh, little bit of info and by the way it's the uh, state of the diacos all three on the hot seat and we've already got daddy's wife to chime in and, and shut most of it down so Stephen, <laughs> tell me, uh, you thought it would be my wife yeah i did uh, candle's actually giving me three thumbs up and saying i'm glad it was fucking romina and not me buddy <laughs> Woo! Uh, Woo! Uh, <laughs> I did that with Candle Diaco and, with five thousand and, and, and for the record, <laughs> and, and for the record, I only have one Diaco wife's number, and that's uh, the coolest one of all, Krista, because you cannot, because she's one of the boys. She is. She's one of actually boys. like make it dirty or uh, you know, put, don't let these guys off so easy. So, Steve, tell me about your brilliant board game. It was my first company, the first company I formed, and I got it trademarked and I, and uh, the the whole game copyrighted. And this is when board games were big, Trivial Pursued. And so I had a game on movie quotes. And there were three different variations of it. And um, Any more beers? it failed horribly. Oh. oh, it did? I mean, you you went to market with it? No, we uh, just could never. We, we, we really never even were able to pitch it to any, you know, major board game companies. They don't take ideas. They wouldn't let us even in the door. It was a... Uh, it was a you learning know, experience. You, you know what's so disappointing? But it failed. You know what's, you know what's, I wouldn't say disappointing, but I would say just gonna, you guys were so ahead of the caffeine game with, I know, with, with that, Fiend. It was so frustrating. <clears throat> you guys were so ahead. I don't know, a lot of my listeners don't probably know, but there was the, the, the Diacos, and I think, Dan, didn't you formulate it? No, we had a guy named Anthony Almada formulate it. I helped. Yeah, I but started, Dan, you, I you, actually you, was the base of the concept. first thing. It was, was, was your concept. Caffeine I did, citrate. I did the first formula, and right. then I needed help, and he had a, a, a flavor 
Like he was like a, a flavoring guru and knew how did, to put different creat- flavors. He, did, uh, what, uh, he, had, he, he invented uh, an artificial sweetener. And so he, he really knew how to do this stuff. And he was able to fine tune what I had, had put together because I got 95% of the flavor of the caffeine out because caffeine tastes like shit. Well, anyway, just to, just to backfill everybody, circa, God, was this like 2000. Three-ish, three-ish, yeah, early two? 2000s. 2002, 2003, uh, the Diacos have this, and it's a pa- about a packet about like that. It's like a, it's like a sugar packet yeah, size. Yeah, like the sugar packet size, and it was called Fiend. It was, and it was straight caffeine, yeah. it was powder caffeine, and it was tasteless and odorless, and you could add it to anything from water- To a beer. To a beer, to orange juice, to any, anything. You could put it in Coca-Cola, it doesn't matter. And how many grams it was? By the way, it was F E I N. I think it's how it was spelled, right? Yes. F E I N. And how many mil- Dan? How many milligrams? Of- I think it was about seventy-five milligrams of caffeine. Right. <clears throat> and it was about ten years ahead of the Red Bull in in, it was. in vodka drinks. It was. Yeah. And, and, and it was just like I don't know. Like, is it just before Monster Energy even yeah. came oh, out? I mean, oh, Red Bull yeah. had just come out. The no, five you guys were energy. ahead of Red Bull. No, the Red Bull's Red Bull's been out, around a and lot Five Hour Energy was out right. because I was shocked. Five Hour Energy was selling like five million doses a week. Right. And when we were like, you know, ours is a better product. It because, was because that tastes like crap, and ours you could put in anything, and so. To have a caffeinated Sprite or a caffeinated orange juice or a caffeinated whatever you wanted was incredible, and you didn't have to carry around some stupid little vial or some big giant Monster Energy can. But you For know, me, with all these things, this is kind of taking me down memory lane, Bubba. And, and I'm not trying to upset you. No, 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 no because but it's the opposite. Lost it's, a million dollars. Well, I mean, all these business, whether it was you know trying to buy the the Buccaneers, that would have been a life changing experience. The the big fight, Fiend. Um, you know my board game, all these different all things. All the risks. So, so all Being it just is telling me is, and, and Bubba, how many did you have? <laughs> Nightclubs, oh. restaurants, merchandise, racetracks, and so. But we, as a family, all of us, Bubba have constantly dip. are going for it, reinventing going for ourselves. It, going we for owned, it. we owned an airplane together. We going sure did. for it. That's and, the one yes. thing I miss. And you know what? Every really now really. and then, we've knocked it out of the park. Yeah. You have Bubba. Danny has. Remember Jay how has, fucked I, I got have. on the chicken dip? Remember the chicken uh, dip? Uh, yeah, course, yeah, man. That, that was insane. Uh, but we did it. You know, Dan, you if were we ever make a Publix, lot of money bro. again, we got to get a fucking plane again. There's no doubt. And we'll go in again on it. You were the best partner ever. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was. But we've had an incredible journey, all of us, and we've had great successes and great failures and but you can't hit a home run without swinging you gotta and get so up to right. bat swing. i'm big we on swinging steven tell yeah, me about tell me about the time or jay tell me about the time that steve made you eat a bl- me eat blueberries so there's a reason why I'm, <laughs> I'm traumatized <laughs> by, hey, do by I got fruit. Some good, do I got some good questions? Yeah, that's, that's a good. real one. All that's right. a real one. All right. and so we're, we're in Ocean City, New Jersey, when we used to spend our summers there. And my two brothers are just perplexed at the fact that I don't like blueberries. And one of the things that they, my mom used to do is get fresh blueberries at the corner store, and they would drink it, where they would have it with milk and sugar. And so they're having just a field day with these bowls of blueberries, and I'm just making faces. And so Stephen decides to hold me down and to grab some blueberries. Steve and, was a dick, was he oh, not? Oh, and he was <laughs> trying to push them in my mouth, and I was not going to open my mouth. Steve, you were wired so mean. So he literally, with his thumb, he, he smashed blueberries. Where was Danny MIT, during all this? Just giggling behind me, holding me down. So uh, Danny wouldn't even help you. He'd help no, Steve. Oh, no, Fuck with you. So, and so I'm still traumatized. <laughs> Silence of the blueberries. It still bothers me. Dan, tell me, t- talking about Mr. Johnny Anger over there, tell me about the time on two different occasions that Steve broke your car window. Okay. On two different occasions. <laughs> That's true, too, though. <laughs> and, and it wasn't an accident. It was both mad as fuck at you. While yes. we're fighting and driving. Fights, driving while yes. fighting. DWF. So one was I had the window down, and Steven... Wanted me to roll it up because he didn't want his hair messed up. Steve's very particular about his hair. You know, Steve you is. can't touch Jimmy's ear or no. Steven's hair. No. Or they'll kill you. They're, they're, they get very upset. And so my car was parked outside in high school. It was a Dodge Omni 024, and they, you know, don't have great water seals. And so it would always have like a little bit of that, like, you know, that sort of mildewy type smell. And I was like 16, you know, in high school, maybe 17. And I'm driving to my friend's house, and Steve's like, roll up your window. I'm like, no, I don't like to. I, I'm airing out the car. Roll up the window. And so he pulls my hair back against the seat, like, grabs my hair, and pulls it back. And so 
What I do is I just reach back with my hand like a mom would do, like when you're bad, just to kind of grab anything, and I punch, and I catch the top of his nose, and I hurt him. So then he starts punching me and pulling my hair and, and just really fighting with me from behind me, and I can't do anything. So I slam on the brakes, pull on the side of the road, and I dive in the back seat. And those cars had bucket seats. Right. And Dodge so, Omni 024. And so I don't. And now is Jay around? No. Not my friend, for this my friend Jack's in the I passenger seat. I was for many seat. other ones. Yeah. D- Steven's in the back. I made Jack- Steven ride in the back because my best friend would ride passenger, Jack so Caramello. All right. So Steve had to ride in the back. Like, so, a, like a dog. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but Danny needed Steve to get into the parties. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I dive into the back seat and I start beating on Steven. And then he gets his feet underneath me and he sh- sh- pushes me forward. And my back hits the rearview mirror and shatters my windshield. That so, was incident one. That was incident one. And then that fight ended up pouring outside. There's one point where I was literally slamming his head on the, on the cement. I was so mad at him. But it, it eventually de-escalated. Did you get any blood on your academic letter jacket? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, let, I let it in the rest Can, can <laughs> you tell us about your academic letter jacket, <laughs> yes, please? I will. <laughs> Anyway, I got some good questions. <laughs> All right. got some good the ones. second broken window was Stephen. No, no, I'm argument. asking about your okay, academic okay. letter jacket, please. <laughs> okay, so when I was a freshman at the very beginning of the year, they had a, like a little thing where they talked about the year and everything, and there was a, a a little paragraph that said if you got straight A's five times in a row, you get a varsity letter. I'm like, I'm doing it. Because you, you couldn't, know, athletically, you couldn't do well, it. I was a freshman. Right. I, I was going to get a varsity letter as a, as a skinny little freshman. I wrestled 107 and 114 when I was a freshman. So um, I did get a JV letter for doing that, but I really wanted this varsity letter because it's the bigger ones. You know, the JV ones were little jabroni letters, and the, 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 the varsity one was a big N. And so I get my five dean's lists in a row. I get straight A's every semester, and I'm like, okay, where's my letter? And they're like, you're not getting a letter. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, it's not really that. We, we, we didn't mean that. I'm like, the hell you didn't. I want a letter. And so me and my mom together fought hard enough. Are you remember there, they are gave you, you that but, academic but, but thing first. first. They, they gave you the car- gave like a, a trophy or something like that. No, you know, no, it's no, like here, a different patch. It's like an the, academic patch. Yeah, they gave the you letter. an academic patch. And what the, they did the, at first, though, they, was, well, Eventually, though, they gave me a full-size end, yes. and it had like a little Aladdin's lamp on yes. it. Like, but, the, but the worst part was how they did it. Danny was a freshman. They had an awards assembly, and he was there with mom expecting to get the varsity letter and, and they he goes up out. and they gave him this little square patch that wasn't a varsity letter. And this is what I learned what a strong woman was because she my mom went out, to the she? Pinellas County School Board. She showed him that paragraph and she said, this young man spent his entire year trying to accomplish his goal and you will do Fix what it. you said you will do. And, and so they, they made a an academic Varsity letter, which is still used to this day in Pinellas County. I got four years in a row. This goes to each and every one of you, and we will start, Dan, so that you know the order. Okay. Not you first. Okay. We're going to go Steve, Jay, then you. Which, Steve, who is most like your mother of your brothers, including yourself? (laughs) Most like mom. Probably me. Okay. Jay? I think it's me. Dan. I think it's me. <laughs> the best I, don't, ever. I don't know that that question's ever been asked. <laughs> no, no, it hasn't. No one no, ever has asked now, this now, Never. Now, now, who's most like Daddy Joe? Me. Same order? Same. Oh, same no, no. <laughs> Jay. No, 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 no. Reverse order. You want to go me go first? Yeah. Yeah, yes, Dan. Okay, that Steven. You go. Steven. Danny. <laughs> Jay. Um, me. Wow. Who is, and we'll start, and the the order from now on will be Steve, Dan, Jay, in just natural order down the line. Who is this, Steve? Who is the most shy? Jay. Jay. Me. Aggressive. Mm, in me. anger? Uh, Dan, or in, shut wait, up. I have a question, though. You mean like in general just or in like ge- in anger? In general. Okay. In me. life. Steve says himself. Danny? Me. Steve. Passive. Danny. <laughs> Jay. Me. Forgiving. Me. Steve. Steve. Oh, look at that. If you had to kill somebody 
and you had to bury the body, what friend would you go for help? Dan. Steve. Steve. I would say. Brother or friend? Either. Yeah, I, either. Oh, well, okay, that's well, different. If, if it's if outside, you, the, you brother, outside the family, let's I have like, a definitive let's, answer, let's too. Let's take an outside the family version of that question, Steve. All right, let's do, let's do, let's do two, two, two versions of it. In, in family, out of family. Same oh, question. Like, oh, okay. So it's. Well, just, I mean, I could get rid of the body pretty well. All you right, know what Steve. I'm, like, I'm pretty good. Steve, at that I would part. still say Danny. Yes. Yeah. All right, cool. So even if, even if, no matter who you kill, you're calling Danny. Yes. Danny, you. Well, I mean, the first person I'm probably calling Stephen. <laughs> Jay. I'm, I'm, I'm calling Steve because he's calling Dan. <laughs> <laughs> now, but take, but take it outside the family. You can't call. You know, let's say Steve, we killed Danny, and we can't help. Jay can't help us. Who do we call? Jimmy. Jimmy. Probably Jimmy, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Jimmy called me when he had his crisis. Jimmy or Pity. Couple, I mean, there's there's about a, there's a list of about four or five people. Bubba, you're in that short list, there too. Is, for sure, there's, like, there's a handful that I put in there, and I would put Jimmy, Bubba. Does Jimmy might not Terry, answer. Pity. <laughs> Jer- Jimmy, Terry, Pity. If Here's my oh shit hits the fucking fan list. You guys, Blitz, Tom Bean, and Fabrizi. Yo, that's, that's a good list. Yeah, Jimmy too. He's on your yeah, list. Oh, I, know no, that. I, I meant Jimmy's. Yeah, absolutely. Those Jimmy, two have literally been Mr. Wolf to the other. Jimmy, Jimmy, and Bubba have. And you been have been to everyone here. Oh. Well, for sure. But, well, we I mean, all, but I've done a little bit there too. We've all done a little bit. <laughs> Tom We've all Bean, been Tom Bean for Breezy's, the Diacos, Jimmy, and Blitz is probably not in any certain order. My oh shit! I just killed somebody. How the fuck? And Fabrizi's probably, probably Fabrizi and Steve are at the top because they got docks. <laughs> right. You got that water I got access. a boat. I can and help Jimmy. you with water access. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, exactly. Um, hold on now. Danny, questions for you. Do you prefer working with your father or Jay? Uh, right now, Jay, absolutely. I like to hear that, Dan. That's nice. I'm not a bad person to work you know, with. Working with dad was always always made me nervous. Um, you know, when I I remember when I was in medical school or residency, that was medical school. I had to spend a summer with him, and he was you know he's tough to work for. And I made it a point that every time he said let's go, to jump up with like enthusiasm, and I started doing that in life. And I really learned that 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 people that you work for when when someone tells you like let's do this just jump up and like get ready to go instead of like you know getting up slowly like it's like a a burden and so i learned that from dad and he 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 wouldn't he wouldn't fuck with me if, if i did that and but but dad has like a different set of like his his norms are not my norms, and what he considers important is not necessarily what Has I consider important. Has he ever got important. on you before? Yeah, like, I saw him all the time, no, every, no, no, every no. week. Now, hold on. I'm he talking still gets to, on me. Talk, today. The, one of my favorite pictures of all oh, time the, is the best picture. Is with you two in the operating room, and you both are looking at the camera, and you both have your masks on, and it's just that it's was that just, summer. So fucking cool. Yeah, that was that summer. The that picture was where they say, I mean, "Hey, how, you looking at me?" Well, not only that, but it's a dad. And a and a son that are doctors in an operating room, Doing like the same thing. how yeah, fucking cool. rare is like it's just so rare and it's so precious. And I'm not trying to kiss your ass. I'm just saying like it's just it's something that Jay will never have. It's something yeah. that Stephen will never something have. Something I was jealous of. Yeah, right. I agree. Exactly. And, and it's just, beautiful. You know, it's just yeah. it's so fucking special. Not only to be a doctor, to, but but be into that environment with your dad in an operating room. Like it's just, just there's so many cool things about it. And surgery <clears throat> truly is the pinnacle of medicine. Oh. It's it's where the best meet, and and it's the hardest to do. And yeah, and Dan, that those two had that. It's really it is a, a remarkable. And that they got to work with the Bucks together was incredible. Right. And so early on, Dan, or Dan, in those environments where you would be in an operating room with your father, mm-hmm. did he ever have to fucking set you straight, or, or or you know, have you ever had to correct him? You know, it's funny. Um, he he never had to set me straight. He was a good teacher, and I was a good learner. But I remember one time we were operating, and there was something bleeding, like in the corner of the of the the field. The field's like the area where you're open and you're in the belly. Right. And I'm like, Dad, you see that bleeder? He goes, What? You think I'm fucking blind? You don't think I fucking see that bleeder? I've been doing this shit for thirty fucking years. What are you fucking moron? Steve, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Steve, 
have you ever heard this story before? No, no. But, but Dad would cut promos. I mean, he would do it on I mean, nurses. So he would funny. do it on other That's doctors. Where Dan gets it from. Dan still does and, it. And the thing about my father, and, and somebody asked earlier, like, how did he get the job with the Bucks? It was because he was the best surgeon in the region and not, the hardest working and and he's one of the best surgeons during his era in the country in the world he invented procedures he in, he operated on the most difficult cases and then obviously the most high net worth people on athletes. the planet he was right. the yankees I mean, doctor he, did, he became not just for the bucks he operated on athletes all over the well, country your dad, marquee your, athletes your dad Hall actually fame athletes. just like andrews might still be the knee guy but for years in, in birmingham alabama was the knee guy yeah. your dad in globally or within America, if a guy had a sports hernia, yep, that he it. got no matter. I don't care if you play for the Milwaukee Brewers or the fucking Seattle Seahawks. If you would get shipped to Tampa, that's right. And Joseph Diaco would fix would do your hernia repair. No, he did it for NHL players. And Dan, you Boxers, may remember the remember, name. Yeah, he it did was it for either, tons of people. Either Dwight Gooden or Daryl Strawberry in the middle of the World Series had a hernia. And in New York, they were literally going to do old school, cut your wide open, which is a week in the hospital, five weeks out of work. And my dad found that out. And he's like, have him come here. I can do it. He'll be back on the field in a week. Now, isn't and your he, dad one of the very first or maybe one even actually one of the people that helped invent the laparoscopic hernia deal? He, yeah. Well, here's, here's the answer to that question. The laparoscopic hernia procedure kind of evolved over the first five to seven years that it was out. And dad and I together published the largest first big paper on laparoscopic hernias. So he was absolutely on the forefront of it. He started doing the laparoscopic gallbladders back in the day before the laparoscopic hernias. Cheveria was his buddy. Yes, yes. Yeah. He taught him how to do it. So I learned how to do the laparoscopic gallbladders with dad that one summer that we keep talking about. When I did my residency, I could do a lap laparoscopic cholecystectomy. It's called or a lap gallbladder in under a half hour. I, as an intern, was getting called by the Tulane attendings because they were doing lap coles and getting lost. I would literally go in there and save the 50-year-old surgeon from getting screwed because he didn't know where he was in the, in the belly. That's how good of a teacher my dad was. That's how many times I did that procedure with dad. And so when I had the ability to start doing laparoscopic or endoscopic breast augmentations, I was so good with that laparoscope or endoscope that I was able to take a two-dimensional feedback and live in a three-dimensional world with it. And so it was it was priceless. Now, when I was at the Bucks, I got to do six years on the sideline. I remember going to Dallas one uh, Thanksgiving for a Thanksgiving game. And after the game, I was in the, in the x-ray area because I think Allstott had to get an x-ray. His neck was bothering him. It was after his neck problems. And T.O. was in there. And so I'm... Terrell I'm, Owens. Terrell Owens. And, you know, he had such a bad reputation being such a dick to so many people. But I'm sitting in there... And he hops up on the, on, the, on the table next to me and sits next to me. He goes, hey, what's your name? I said, Dan Diaco. He goes, Diaco, your daddy fixed my hernia about six <laughs> years ago. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, God bless you, man. And he was so nice to me just because hey, I dad, got had a, taken that thorn, dad had taken that thorn I out of his I got palm. a text today from the gr- fucking stud-ass Ty J. Armstrong. Ty J. Armstrong. And he said, man, I'll be listening to the Diacos. I like those cats, He's but such a great nobody's guy. better a great than guy. Daddy Joe. He calls Nobody. him Daddy Joe. Yep. He loves Daddy Joe. Has there been times, Dan, when you, on the on the few summers that you worked with your dad, um, the, which was when that picture was taken, and you would fucking nail it because you are, I mean, as much as we fuck with you, you are absolutely you know, an uh, an unbelievable gifted surgeon. Well, thank you. And, I mean, you you almost lost seven thousand dollars last week on a fucking fake Rolex. But I'm just saying, like, you know, like, again, you're a, you're one of the most talented people I know. I almost lost seven thousand, eight thousand <laughs> on, a, on a fake gun. Yeah. Did your dad ever, while you're you know up Big in the mix, Red with twenty five subs, Gilkey's Goiter, Jimmy's from Beer City, Minuteman? Thank you guys. When you when you were in there, fucking be, you know, danning it up, fucking knocking out of the park. Did Joe, who does you know, who's stiff, stiff as fuck, Big Red, but did he ever say? You know, fuck, son. God, you're good. Or, you know, my God, I'm proud of you. You know what? It's funny. The the, the one time he did That's a good that question. was I was sewing up one of Jay's kids. And was it Trey or Sage? Which one was it? Was it the it chin? Was, it oh, was the no. Chin. It was her, but her chin was so deep. It was her. Okay, okay. So, yeah, Sage. It was Sage's what, what daughter. Did, what yeah. is, one of Jay's kids, Sage, the daughter, his daughter, had split her chin open. And, you know, every kid splits their face open one yeah. time as a kid. Pretty much every single Steve one does, does it almost one every time. time he gets on a fucking treadmill. <laughs> 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 
fucking inside Steve. joke. That, was, oh, that, was scar right that there. one came from Krista. Yeah, anyway, go ahead. Scar the show. Uh, show anyway, the scar. Sorry, Steve. Anyway, go ahead, Dan, Danny. So I'm sewing up. I'm sewing up his daughter, Sage. Sage. She being tough. She and, being a good girl. And, yeah, she's being a good girl. Jay didn't like the blood, and so he was trying to help. But we, we, we Dad Candle was there. Candle was calming Jay down. Cam was yes. calm. <laughs> Candle, I, I mean, yeah. Candle was calming Jay down. Yeah. Say it. Candle's hardcore. I mean, oh, yeah. that tough. chick can handle anything. And so Jay doesn't like blood. Stephen doesn't really like blood either, which is why they're lawyers and not doctors. Right. Right. So I'm sewing her up, and Dad's there, and I'm in my office, and literally after every stitch, she's like cheering me on. Oh my God, look at that! That great job! And then <laughs> he and really he'd stand up, Sage. and he stand up and he'd hit the like light that I'm using, and like, knock it out. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> so Joe was popping on the sutures. Every suture, he was giving me Come like on, a pop, man. and so it was so funny. I will and tell been you, a this. couple times he's done that where he's like watching me do stuff now that, you know, he's a little older now. He's in his 80s. He yeah, has, he hasn't operated. He hasn't operated. In, really in 10 years and so when he does get to see me suture things and, and do some procedures he, he has some pride because he really did teach me how to tie knots how to hold the needle holder how to hold tissue how not to be scared how to make sure that's a this. big one right there I how not to be scared you. i will tell you this when you were sewing up you're one of my best friends and like like one of like one of the most proud times ever with jay is when i'm there is everybody okay? Yeah, everyone's good. Uh, I just put a beer down. Oh, okay. And Harley's not with 15, is, 18 subs. And when she, Big Red, 25. Oh, my God. 20,000. Oh, my God. Oh Slam my and God. Phoebe's beef with 20,000. 20, when Thank Jay, it, either when Jay's in depots with the fucking zillion depots that he's been with me, or when Jay is in lawyer mode and especially the clothes. It's fun to watch, it just it? It just makes you just like, be like, oh, my God, that's my fucking guy. I well, know. I have those moments when the most recent, when you stitched up Lummy and you took eight fucking, you know, upholstery stitches and turned them <laughs> into 50, you know, really fine, fine, fine. And I mean, to watch you is uh, is amazing. It just makes you so proud. And then you go do something fucking stupid. Well, thank you. <laughs> and then he dares it out to me. I, you know, I can't be perfect. So. And then you end up at my place on a Saturday with some stupid shit. And I'd be like, what the fuck, Dan? One of the proudest things I ever saw was I watched, you know, when, when Jay was in law school, I watched him do a trial competition and he crushed it. It was so fun to watch him. And He's it was a so fucking proud crusher. He got second in the whole country in a trial competition. But, you know, what What I still to this day can't forget is when they were in the big field deal trial, and on that, I think it was a Wednesday. It was Friday. Jay, or Friday. Jay had to argue against a motion for retrial, and with really no time at all, Jay presented such an incredible case, and his argument because, you know, his closing, he thought about for three months. His opening, he thought about three, you know, that case went for years and years and years. He lived it and lived it and lived it. And so, you know, you could say it was brilliant, and it was. His closing was one of the best closings ever. It was a great close. But it's something that he... Wasn't as good as his close on my deal. That's what I'm talking about. His close on your deal. Oh, my deal. I think your deal was one of the best closes ever. I mean, people. It was the same trial. He's talking about it. the hearing on the Friday about the hearing when, they when they tried to, to throw us oh, out. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they yeah. tried to fire me, and they right. tried to get right. all of it. That day, that disaster day. Yeah. And on and that Jay day, had Jay no had prep, no prep, no, no warning. And he stood up like he, a man. And he, he fucking nailed it and knocked it out of the park. That was the best lawyering I've ever seen. Everyone keeps talking about his clothes and all the other shit. That was stuff he prepared for. Everyone's got a chance to prepare for those things. Jay did not have a chance to ever have expertise in this side of the law he did not have a chance to review the case law except for the last like 40 minutes before he had to make his argument and had and Chad he was Thomas able to, make, to pronounce a word he was able to make a vitiate <laughs> he was and able scoring to home, uh, Steve locked up <laughs> and so Steve locked up he did lock up that day Steve locked Three up his wins I'm locked day. up now I can, I can hardly speak so, I mean, 42 subs and Crypt Keeper were 23 I would have been under the table oh, in the yeah. fetal position so my brother in my face and that's with the camera the whole world watching him the of his whole life for that moment but hold on now i've been asked by uh you know one of the questions that i've been asked that i as part of the state of the diacos is what is my most proudest moment of all 
Dan, are you okay? I just threw a beer away. What I'm the drinking. Fuck? You know, we're I'm just trying to be quiet. Over. Just, 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 just quiet. I'm I... trying to be quiet. You're throwing across the room, you fucking dildo. Sorry. Don't make me call Steve to fucking whip your ass. <laughs> okay. He's right here. <laughs> <Good luck. laughs> fucking... How many scars does Steve have for me, and how many scars do I have for uh, Steve? Okay, that's that's fine. Oh, it's like <laughs> four so to zero. I have, I th- and I've actually thought about this. And I've been asked, what is my th- most proudest moment of each of you? Oh, that's a good question. Interesting. And, and, and I do have, and I'm going to leave Steve for last, because Steve is the less flamboyant of and less public of you three in my stories. And Dan, obviously the most proud I am of you on a couple of different things. One, Dan, on the on the... Your 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 progress that you've made with me on the air. Oh, thank you. You've done so well. I've been trying. Don't get too fucking full of yourself. I'm not. I'm <laughs> trying. But, I said thank you. Know, you. I'm, but, being, I'm proud of you too, Dad. I'm surprised you awesome. said that. I didn't think that was coming. That that's the first one. Thank you. Second one is anytime I'm watching you, doctor, like suture, like you know, just I'm just like, and when you tie those fucking knots, like you're just like 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 Betty Ross, like I'm just like a little bitch. I'm just like, oh my, I'm just melt. Respect. Thank you. Thank That's you. cool. Thank my you. my most proudest J moment obviously is the close. That but, was amazing. Incredible. But, but that's that's the obvious one. Right. My obvious J proud like is when J when in the depositions I've been in. And I've been <clears throat> represented by some re- I've had really good. I've never had a shitty. I've not I don't think I've ever had a shitty attorney. And I've had different attorneys attorneys over the years from Wally Flam, my first attorney in Philadelphia. To JD Ocko, to Kevin Hazlett, to Todd Foster. I've had federal sta- I've just I've had a lot. <laughs> I've been in a and, lot. And, 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 and they've all got different styles. <laughs> right. But Jay is so fucking calculated and good on, uh, in deposition. Well, uh, in any time, but in the depositions I've been at, and when I've been asked a couple questions, Jay has stopped me before I could get one syllable out. <laughs> under and and has yeah, that's, called that's judges priceless. has got rulings has st- I mean has prob probably me not answering a few things Save is, your it, ass. It, it, well, it, you know that's you, that's how why you named me the spitting cobra and it was I came in a deposition and we had just started doing some stuff with uh, the the what was the one uh, the guy Lunsford. Yes, and, Mark and, and you know it would never really turned anything. It was before the Phil Campbell thing, and and we were just kind of helping you out on some stuff. And you know, the opportunities for helping were were immense. But there was one where there was a deposition, and I think Clear Channel was suing you for something. And I just came into the depot because you asked me to. I wasn't even an attorney of record, and you had the sunglasses. Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> and, and they weren't and, prescription. And they, like, they're prescription. And so we fought, and I took over control of that deposition, not having any role in the litigation whatsoever. And the case ended up going away shortly thereafter, right, Bubba? Yes. Yes. And then no, that's Jay, just Jay's that's, amazing. And when he saw me in that, uh, that depo, he was like, You're like a spitting cobra. You come out of nowhere. It was yeah. just, it was, that was the day. And, 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 I, and, I have, and I have 10 of those stories of where he has just changed the direction. I'm kind of on the ropes a little bit. And see, I've been on the ropes a few times on these depots where they kind of got me a little bit. And I don't want to say got me, but, they, you know, whatever. And, and Jay just somehow mass for, I don't know, either on a redirect or what. It's like, okay, we got to clean this up. We got to clean that up. We got to clean this yeah, up. Jay's and then he just really fucking comes good in. At that. And so yeah. now my other story is Steve. And but, I don't oh, know. But wait, can we, before we go to Steve real fast, I just want to tell a quick story about Jay and the depots. Thing. Absolutely. There's a really, really, really good medical malpractice defense lawyer that is, seems to be involved in every fucking case we have. <laughs> and Let's not mention any names. I'm I don't not mentioning it, his right? name. But, and we like the guy. He's good, no, he, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, Definitely. we respect the guy. And so a friend of mine was talking to him once, a friend of mine that I went to law school with, and was talking to him once, and he said that the one person in all of Florida that he hates going against most in depositions is Jay. Because Jay's such a motherfucker in a deposition. It's so <laughs> hard to deal with and so hard to get one over on that he despises going against Jay because it's just it's so hard for him. And Jay often hands him his ass. And we actually recently handed him his ass on a couple cases. I tell you, between... But Jay's amazing on depositions. He knows rules of evidence inside and out, and it's a game. If you don't, pl- if you don't know how to play the game, if you don't know how to play blackjack, you're gonna get your ass whooped. And Between Jay knows how to play. And Jay's got a whole different style than Todd Foster. Oh, they're all different. Than than Kevin Hazlett. 
I'll tell you, some very effective uh, uh, Kevin Hazlett. Some of the best. uh, Todd Foster. I'll tell you another fucking bulldog, Regina Hunter. Regina Hunter on and and her and her lane, you know. Um, yeah, it's it's fun to watch someone absolutely. do what they do well. That's, Great, and, and whatever it is, if it's if it's from painting to flying to doing lawyering or doctoring, it's fun to watch. That's why we watch athletes, especially if they have a passion for doing master, what they do. Yeah, people that love and master their craft, it's fun to watch. That's why we watch baking shows. It's cool to watch someone that's good at doing something. You know who I never, I've never been in a deposition with, and and. I'm I'm sure you guys may have. Uh senior, Norman Canella Senior. Oh, he saved my ass once. So uh, I, I know love he him. Did. Jay, have you ever been in depots with, with I've been in hearings with him. He just he speaks like foghorn leghorn. Uh, well, uh, son? Uh, so, no, I don't know. Remember, know that remember that during the Steve deal goes issue yet, Judge? Y'all know I gotta tell you something. My hearing's going. I like to sit right next to my witness. And he's sitting right by Jay, right by Steve. Just so you can hear him. <laughs> he he and said, a he few said the most famous line that he's ever said, in my opinion, is senior. Yeah, senior is if you don't talk, you walk. Yeah, and everyone listening should live by those words. I didn't know if what it you meant. I was trouble, so I was so you, like I I just had to, t- and I didn't know that they were hunting shut. hunting for me. And if I had not listened to him, I'd have been eviscerated. If you don't and he walk. said another another thing because he he was a his a dear friend of the family, and so was his son. I was freaking out one day, and he lived near me, and I... Senior? He called yes. me afterwards. And I called him up, and I said, uh, do you mind if I stop by? And he's like... Uh, Jay, your brother's freaking out. It, he it was a Sunday. <laughs> he, he's like, he's like Stephen, I hear the car downstairs. Come on up. I mean, he's like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I come up there, and he's literally sitting on his porch overlooking the water, and he's just rocking in the chair. And I sit down, and I start just weeping. And I'm freaking out, and I'm so scared, and I'm, I just don't know what to do. And he doesn't really say much. He just keeps looking at me, and he's rocking his chair. And after, I don't know, I'm, I'm palather and, and just, you know, releasing all this. He looks over at me and goes, you know, Stephen, I'd hate to see you in real trouble. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, hold on now. But hold on, I know. But my final story goes to you, Stephen. And maybe you don't react real well to yourself in trouble, but I have been in real trouble. And I can remember I was in my pool with Nikki, and I got a phone call from you and Tom Bean. And you guys are both on speakerphone, and it's when the shit is hitting the fucking fan. We don't know what's this. going on. And, I, Jay, I think you might be part of it as well. I just remember it happening. <laughs> and Stephen, at this point, you know, Tom Bean's like, you know, they may arrest you. We don't know what's going on. We're trying to fucking figure it out. And in 48 hours, Stephen had made inroads and did and did what he did and negotiate and talk to people and get stuff and came up with an agreement uh, that got me out of trouble uh, that I, you know, that I that I gladly, you know, entered into this agreement. But Steve, you're the guy that put that deal together. We all know it. Bubba, then and, and I just gotta say that is thank you, Bubba. one of the all time best outcomes. unknown outcomes yes. of anything and in that history that I've seen put it together as a right lawyer. There. He put it to that We used guy. to call him Houdini because he would make things disappear before they started. I was the well, guy you wanted to go to after it got started, but before it got started, you go to Steve. Well, Thank you, Bob. So, That's Steve, sweet. you mean that really, that, thank you. I, well, my most, I mean, That's and, awesome. and not a very public moment either. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know about it, and I don't think I spoke about it in any way that could get me in trouble no. now. But no. you know, Stephen, I was in in two days. I went from thinking that I was going to be arrested and go to jail, and my whole and and my life did end up being you know uh, upended, but I w- remained free. And I would say the majority of that was you and Tom Bean. Dan, do you just fucking come? You know, like, we're in the middle of a fucking show right now, Danny. That would be like me walking in on your operating room, you stupid fuck. 
Dude, just it's, when it's we say front... you're the smartest guy here, and then you're walking in and out like it's a fucking concert. I need to get another beer. <clears throat> there is some and protocol I had, I had around to pee, here. And I, I walked out quietly. Could you say and you I, came in like and, a, you, ca- and you came in like, and and like, like and I'm, ju- I'm putting Steve over like a million bucks, and you don't give a fuck. No, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. It's, it's, it's not him. Not him right now. See Steve walk out during your fucking. I'm so proud of you when you fucking stitched up Lummy's fat fucking face, now, did you? He was welcome to. I got some like you know coffee. Oh, that is so funny. Danny, what the. Fuck. I'm sorry. Classic I thought you wanted narcissist. me to walk out quietly. I mean, I, you want me to announce when I have to walk out to get out? No, you just see the sign on the door says no slamming the door. I that didn't means slam for the door. you too, Dan. All I of us slam and it. you. Did I slam the door, Bubba? Uh, no, you squeaked the door, though. Okay, well, I can't help it that you need fucking oil on your door. Well, I can't help it that you need to go out like a little fucking bitch all the time. I'm Everybody sorry, else can I got hold a their shit. Bitch bladder, dude. I'm drinking beers. I'm sorry. I, I want to get a cold Romina, one. Romina, I feel your fucking pain. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Donnie, <laughs> don't leave the room. Oh, Donnie, I want to be able to see you all the time. You could be tying off your cock, getting ready to strip again. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, this goes to all of you. Who, hands down, was the most uh, influential person in your life growing up? Starting with Steve, or uh, are you talking? Let's start with Jay. Okay. Ask a question uh, about the answer. Are you yes, talking Dad. about anyone in general, or about ourselves? He said the most influential. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My brothers. Jay. My brothers. I, I idolized my brothers, and I really followed Stephen everywhere he went. Stephen went to Florida State. I followed. I went to Florida State. Stephen went to Stetson. Yeah, because he fucking got it all set I up followed, for you. I went to I mean, Stetson. he had it all Steve set up for Florida you. State. I, I was at <laughs> Lambda Chi. I came. I followed at Lambda Chi. Steve became a lawyer in Tampa. I became a lawyer in Tampa. And so uh, Steve's been the person I've probably emulated the most and, and, and followed. Dan, over to you. My dad. Steve? I would say my grandma, Diaco, my, my dad's mom. That she was the most influential? Yes. Oh, Grandma Diaco is incredible. Yes. She's the one that came here straight off the boat, Bubba. And she was really? all about school, 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 and you could do anything. And I was like, I was not the prettiest in the family. And uh, going through an awkward stage and pimples and buck teeth. And she'd look at me and she's like, oh, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. You know, I'm like, and you start believing that. And you're so brilliant. You're so smart. And you're... And you're not, you know. And did I, she put I, a couple Mamma Mia's in there. Mama oh, she Mia. talked. No, she really did she talk had a really like thick that. She had broken, accent. broken English. And she just believed in you so much that you believed in yourself. And she just like just knew I could do things that I wasn't sure I could do. I tried know? to parent like so, she grandparented she was, Steve. She was incredible. I do that with my children. Now, all the time. Steve, back to you on another set of questions. If you if you and Krista would die <laughs> in a very tragic, you know. Well, looking at Fire the and l- 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 no, maybe one of those manatees that you guys are filming, you know, got up there and got you. <laughs> 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 yeah. We all saw her. Following her Instagram. We all saw her. It's either a sunset or I sent them a text. Oh. Like, You're two hours late. You know, yeah. I don't know my wife's supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if one of the manatees, you know, got up there and got you both, yes. who and your kids and your children were not grown like mm-hmm. they are now, because mm-hmm. you have the oldest kids both in college. I mm-hmm. think Nick's now going to MIT. Mm-hmm. With, yes, with Bella at, with a with, with a USC kicker, yeah. pretty damn good. Thank you. Um, Super proud. Where let's say Nick and Bella are, you know, teenage, twelve and nine or whatever, yes. and something happens to you and Krista. Who, which brother, do you send your kids to? Um. Okay. So good, I had that question, in my. I I, I had, had it as well. Right? Yes, I did. Yeah, we, but we all have those agreements. And right, I don't, let's, let's I, you know, I, I don't really. It's hard to say. Like one would do better than the other. My thinking was that I wanted my kids to have yeses, and Danny would have been providing that the most readily. So, <laughs> so um, is Jay a little harder? Jay's yeah. tough, man. Jay's, Jay's tough. tough. Jay's and he's tough. a tougher. Not compared you know. to Steven. <laughs> but but so so I would say Jay's the stiffest parent. I'm in the middle. And Shit, Dan's Steven, the, you the, need to look. Take a good look in the mirror, dude. Michael Mirror, take or Michael slackest. Jackson. Take a, take a look at the man in the mirror, buddy. So so I so I had Danny down for it, but. I, Jay would have done an incredible job with my kids. I would have trusted them equally with them. You just have to put somebody, and I put Dan. So okay, now Dan. Over I to had you. Stephen. I think as as the the person to take care of my kids. So, the only thing that I don't trust Stephen with is my life ending decisions because that <laughs> motherfucker will will pull the plug as soon as you like close your eyes and take a nap. Oh, <laughs> he's, dead. he's done. Uh, he's done. Uh, <laughs> all right. So Jay's doing those, but I trust uh, Stephen with with. 
everything else in my I life. I got to tell you, man. I, I absolutely have zero trust with him for medical decisions. I don't. I hate I, his medical decision making. I don't know if anybody's enjoying this as much as me, but man, I love peeling this Diaco on you. <laughs> <laughs> it is so fucking entertaining. It's cathartic all, for us. Well, because all three of you are just so similar, but yet so fucking different. Jay, question is to you for your kids. Okay. Um, Steven, that's who was in my will. That's who, that's who, that's who. Yep. Um, if you, Dave, I'm hitting the head real quick. I'll be right back. <clears throat> See, that's how you do it. Is that how he wants to do it? Okay. All right. Sorry. So I'm hey, going to give you a beer. Bring me a beer. I'm going to get, up. but uh, this is the question that you can contract. contemplate Crypt while you're beer. peeing. Hold on, Steve. This is the question. So just think about it when you come back. Okay. Uh, your brothers are going to answer it. Okay. Your go gay guy. We all have a go gay guy. We do? So just a go of, gay so guy. Just, I don't So just think about means. it and come back. We, can you have <laughs> to find that by a go gay guy? Yeah, I mean, like, off the top, like, my go... You should have started with Steve. He has an answer my, already. My Steve, go... Steve, 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 my, he's got a couple answers to my, that. My go, my go gay guy would be, back in the day, it was Jet, It was Brett Favre. Right. And so, and uh, and so, you know, like, an, like if, if you had to go, if you, if somebody put a, head, a gun to your Tom head... Tom Brady, said, right? Now it's Tom Brady for you, right? No, no, right now... If, it's if, Dion. No, it's not Dion. <laughs> I haven't even, it's, it's not about it's my it's not about my go gay guy. What we're asking if it's you? about your go oh, no, it's okay. not the state of the Clem. Okay, okay, I was just curious as an, an Steve, example. And so Steve's thinking about his. He's probably freaked out about it. He probably won't even come back. He's probably leaving. Uh, He's got a list of five for you. Dan, who who is your go gay guy? If I had to be gay. If somebody put a gun to you, it was going to kill your entire family unless you had a gay experience it, with with a man. I, You know who it would be? I know this is so fucked up. Um, that's why we're doing what we're doing. Because I think he would be cool, and I think I would get along with him really well. <laughs> Danny, what's wrong with you? He's thinking this too much. I'm thinking about it as you talk about it. The drummer from Foo Fighters. Okay. That's what? Your... Yeah, they got the blonde hair, long blonde hair, and the big teeth, white teeth. Really? Yeah. That's he your go-to like guy. That, if I had to like, 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 have a relationship with a guy, he'd probably be the one I'd want to. That would be. Him. That's not. He was asking for a one-night stand. Your dad's a having like stand? a whole relationship with the guy. Well, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, does it, however you interpret that. I don't know and, how to and, interpret it. I however mean, you I, interpret I, that. I don't know. I mean, I, that's who I'd say. Uh, Taylor Hawkins is his name. Taylor Hawkins. All right, okay. Jay. I would have to say I Tom to Brady. I'm blowing, Tom right? Brady. <laughs> Jay, yours would be yours would be Tom uh, Tom Brady. Yeah. All right. Who see, do you, I, I hope. <laughs> I, see, when I meet Tom Brady, I don't want him to hear that he would be my gay experience. I, so that's, <laughs> now, that's am, I, am, I am I the only? Am, <laughs> I take it back. Am I the, am I the hey, only Tom, one? Nice to meet you. Here's my number. By the way, a month ago, I said you'd be my gay <laughs> fantasy. Um, am I the only one that's met him? Yeah, I haven't yeah, met him yet. Yeah, but, yeah. Bubba, I will meet him, and I will get him on our show. No, you won't. The fuck I won't. Okay, no yeah, problem. Come on, whatever. Steve, who uh, who is your go? I mean, did you, you, who's your go? If you put, somebody put a gun to your head, uh, and you had to have a gay experience. Next huh. girl, the thousand bits. Nice. All right, so I don't know the guy's name, but uh, the Asian guy from Hangover. <laughs> 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 I don't want because, Why? No, because he's got a very I don't want I'd mean, be like, Oh, you're okay. so big. Oh, you're tearing me up. Oh, this is I have a very delicate, fragile uh, but, it wouldn't be Tommy Lee, right? Hole. I'm just not a so, You know, I mean could you imagine what Tom Brady would do to you? Well, oh, I don't know how God. big I don't know how big Tom Brady is. You I'm know? just saying that's the last thing I'd be as an NFL player. I'd be like, get me the, the <laughs> I'm thinking, Asian, I mean, Asian boys. I'm thinking Antonio Brown might be a little bit bigger than you know, than, than uh, I wouldn't date any of them. Who is who is the best driver? Wait, 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 what's Jay's answer? Oh, Jay, I thought Jay answered. No, he said no. Tom Brady, idiot. He said Tom Brady he took it back. Idiot. No, he oh, can't take it back. That's Danny, enough. Get, that's okay. enough. Okay. Okay. Dan's, Dan's, Dan's Move drunk. On. Moving on. <clears throat> um, the best driver amongst you three. Ooh. All right, for the least amount of accidents that were their fault. If you're talking street driving, Stephen is absolutely the worst. Mr. No, I'm Magoo. the best. You're you the worst. Have, you guys have had way more accidents Steven, than I have. I had an accident this year. It's the first time since 2001. 
Uh, which was also okay, an accident of your fault. My only years. accident I ever had was like in high school when I hit it was Steven, you, it. you curb your car more than any man. <laughs> I'm sorry, you really do. You're Mr. Magoo yeah. is what we call you. you just, that's why you're always swapping out cars, dude, because you're you're banging a Boy, wheel. This is a good one here. This oh, is a good man. So I would say I'm the best driver. I'm the best driver. The worst. Now, the best the racer driver. is probably Jay, but he has better performance Equipment. Oh my so, God! We uh, pay. We see. Dot com. Twenty five. Wow! Thank you. Yes. Thank you. No, no shit. Yes, unbelievable. He's That's the guy incredible. that redid our parking lot. Yes. So you wow, did. Thank you, bro. So Steve, you're saying streetwise, you're the best driver. Your Correct. brothers are saying you suck. You're yeah, not, they do. You're, but you're that's not just that crap. That's crap. You know, some drivers make you nauseous. He will make you nauseous. He Is hits he, the accelerator and the brakes so much that you're, like, going to vomit in your mouth. Doug Clem's Polaroid with 1,000 bits. <laughs> um, uh, Dan, best driver. Me. <laughs> Me. Uh, Jay? Um, I, I'll be honest about it. I think Danny, if he had the same car I had, we'd be very similar, but... Right I, now, I've got a faster car for more years, and so I'm faster on the track, but I think that's probably because I got better equipment. Yeah, I think Jay and I would be very similar in similar equipment. Um, when we have done similar cars, we have similar times. So, and, and what he's doing in a race car is what I'd be willing to do. You know, in a race car, to be really fast, to get those last four seconds, you have to be really willing to not give a fuck. You have to be right on the fucking you ragged edge. Right on the edge. Right. And, and so what I've learned in driving, you know, older race cars, and I've driven, you know, a lot of cool cars. I mean, we had a With three pedals. We had a 430 Le Mans car that we drove, a, a Ferrari Le Mans car that was as, as it was a real race car that sequential was in 21 shifting. races, has sequential shift. I mean, it was cool as shit. No but, throttle blip. But I didn't want to destroy the car because I own the car, and I didn't want to hurt myself because I had a day job. if you had really pushed yourself, you, chances are you'd probably wreck it. But right. the problem is, is that it's, it's, I know where my line is. And I know where the car's line is, but what I don't know is when the car's going to break. Right. And if the car breaks when you're on that cusp of traction and limit and right by the wall, you hit the fucking wall. And it's not your fault. It's just shit breaks. It's, it's amazing, and I, though. And I, can't, and I can't afford to fix myself or the car or to be down that long for a, a recreational sport. I love driving on the track, but there's no reason for me to, to risk my well-being just because I'm trying to get a second off my and, time. And here's the thing. You know, when you do something for a long, long, long time, you get good at it. You know, they, right. they you I've know what? For eight years now. So I have seen, like, I'm at, like, I've ridden with Tony before uh, uh, at, when he was testing at Lakeland in a late model. I mean, in, a, in one of his NASCAR ca in cars, and they put me in the, in the side deal. And just to see how ragged on the edge but yet in control a real professional is now, oh, you know, when, difference. You, when you look at a difference. real professional versus what we danny and i do we're, we're mere mortals i mean what we do compared to street drivers sure we, we're very comfortable at speed we do times that are just a few seconds off what pros would be doing in our cars but those three or four seconds the difference in the skill set is the whole so time. remarkable and their ability to counter steer like your son danny and i just we didn't grow up in the snow and we never did a lot of karting, so we don't have that counter steering intuition that your son would have, or that Tony Stewart or these pro guys do. You know, and they're they're so comfortable correcting an overcorrection right. that it's just it's a whole different level. If you had to be on an island with one of your brothers for a year, who would you pick? Dan. Steve. He knows everything. Dan. Dan, who would you pick? Now that's this a, is, that's a tough one. They both pick you because because just one your knowledge and Stephen and I are equally useless. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Is that what the Christmas card's going to be this year? Jay. Is that what the Christmas card's going to be this year, Jay? Yes. Exactly. Can, can, can I pick a wife instead, like Krista? Uh, <laughs> okay, so cook. she'd be helpful. So, she'd be a lot chatty. I wouldn't be bored. Oh yeah. Now, but you'd no, be wishing for Wilson. <laughs> it, 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 Wilson! Be, between you know, between, I actually, Bubba. We we actually, I actually saw Wilson. I have a picture of it. Me with Wilson. My 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 uh, cousin, who's w genetically like a half sister, married one of the guys that filmed the Castaway, and so and, and he also Gump. did Forrest Gump. So I went to their house right when my uncle died, and I'm outside in their balcony. Uh, hanging out, and I'm sitting on this bench, and I look at this fucking soccer ball that's got, like, grass on it, and I'm looking at it and not really realizing, like, what the fuck is going on? And so I get home, and Stephen's like, 
did you see the bench? Did you see the ball? I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, that was a bench for Forrest Gump, and that was Wilson from the Castaway. I'd, for real? Yeah, oh, yeah, he had all the stuff I've there. I've got a picture no with Wilson on the bench. So I'm, Dan, who do you, of your two brothers, no, you can't, you can't bring, you can't bring Stephen's wife into the deal, <laughs> you, even though she's the most rugged of all. Who would you pick between your two brothers if you had to be on an island for a year? I think I had to. If I had to be on just me and one other person, I'd probably choose Stephen over Jay because I think Jay and I would bicker more than Stephen and I would. And Jay would surf all fucking day. Yeah, and you and I don't bicker ever though when we're alone. Really. Usually not. We usually it's funny because Stephen well Steve and Jay don't fight. Dan and Steve fight sometimes, and 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 Dan and Jay don't fight. Dan, you're talking about yourself in third person. I understand, but I'm just making it easier for everybody to <laughs> I know. hear. Jimmy likes to lean. All right. So, but, but when all three of us together, there's fights. What's the worst combination of of not getting along? Which two? What's the best combination and what's the worst? I'm asking Steve, not you, Danny. You fucking I'm not talking. answering. I don't even know the answer. <laughs> Steve, what's the best combination for you? To If you had to go on vacation with one of your two brothers, just you and either... Dan or Jay, who would you pick and where would you go? I, well, it, it happens. It's Jay and it would be Costa Rica. And it's because he's like, like handles everything. I, I, I don't have to think about anything. He has the, the rental car taken care of. He has all the, sh- the surf locations. Uh, and I'm like I, a different I, person I, when I'm there. He kind of manages I'm like it all. the it's, exact it's, opposite of what I'm like in the United States. And I'm Dan, super you know, I, I really love, you know, partying with Dan, and, and I would love to travel with Dan, but he just doesn't do it much more anymore. Sadly. Jay is Jay is awesome to travel with. Jay is, like, one of the so best Steve people to do, Jay. like, two weeks. Steve for for a two-week vacation, Dan, I pick shut Steve. up for a second. I pick Jay every Steve time. Steve picks Jay. Dan, you pick? For a year, Steven, for a two-week vacation, Jay, hands down. Jay's superior to travel with than Steven. Jay. Jay is awesome. Now, to Jay, with. you are the guy to travel with. He's great. Who, who do you? Which one of these two numbnuts do you pick to travel with you? Which ones would I, you travel with? I travel more with Stephen, and he's easy to travel with. But Danny's much easier. Stephen just gets is a little bit more Anxious. stressed out about the whole trip and getting there, and and you know, so everything's just a little bit more intense with Stephen. Oh, I but thought they're it would both be very easy. I no. thought Steve would be a little more laid back, and Danny would just be shot out of Danny, a fucking cannon. Danny has decided to go on vacation from the moment he's decided. He doesn't take it much. He checks out and he's relaxed, and he's really, really fun when he's relaxed. Yeah, Danny. You know what? Once Danny, I just doesn't security, do it very often. I'm good. We all need to go to the Bahamas one week. That's what I'm saying. Let's do it like in Atlantis. On yeah, a, with just plane. us. No, nobody. We have else. to start doing these things again. I'm, I'm excited that that is happening. Jay, and... win a big case and let's get a fucking plane. Let's do it. <laughs> No, I love it. And actually, I can get us a plane down there very easily, and it would be a lot of fun. That would be incredible. All right, so here's the other question. If if you – now, I hope your wives don't get mad, but if you had to pick a famous actress from the last 50 years to be married to, if if you weren't with your wife, who would it be? Like, mine would be probably – Oh, what was that fuck? Megan, uh, no, no, the, the girl. Meg Ryan? No, no, the girl that was dating Derek Jeter for a little bit. Oh. Minka Kelly. Mm. That would be mine. Mm-hmm. Mine's Minka Kelly. My, uh, you know, crush bitch, so to speak. How about you? Starting with you, Dan, you seem to want to chime in, chime in all the time. He looks half That's a tough one. I'm thinking. I'm just thinking. Um, you know what? It would have been Bo Derek. <laughs> and, and here's why it would have been Bo Derek. <laughs> He's what got her running fuck? up on the beach oh slow with the braids in his mind, Bubba. D- yeah, you're right, Jay. <laughs> He's I, I, like I, Arthur. So, I mean, I've Dan's like, I'll tell you what, because I'm going to be with the 10, motherfucker. She was exactly. in 10. Was I'm going to be with the fucking 10. The 10. And here's why. I saw her in her 50s, and she's still magnificent. And so a lot of these girls that were so pretty in their 20s look like shit when they're 40. And so, you know, there's been a lot of girls that look really good in their 20s and, and early 30s, but, but, but she has, has transcended time, and she was really nice when I met her. She, she wins first place. Uh, uh, Steven? You know, I like, um, okay, so to marry, like, Gail Godot, is that how you know the Wonder Woman? Like, oh, that's, she's... The newest you know, Wonder Woman, the, new, the dark the hair new one. one. Yeah, yeah she's, she's, hot. she's hot. She's a f- former Smart. military yeah. Brazil, uh, she's from hot. Israel. She'd kick she, your ass. Deep. And then, like, but to just like get, you know, like, like 
get crazy with Bella Thorne. Who's Bella Thorne? The Disney girl. The you don't Disney know who girl. that is? What are you, like watching kids shows? <laughs> no, 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 no. She's an adult. Now. She goes, Check your what's mother's it, hard drive. What's it, what is it? <laughs> Only fans or... What is it? <laughs> Only fans. How retired That's are you? Steve. That's <laughs> worse. Steve's you, on OnlyFans. She, she's on that. She's, Only I'm not on guy? that, but oh, she's yeah. like... Oh, she's the oh fuck you're not? You know no, about it. I swear to God. Who still watches Britney Spears from the... Anyway, Google Bella Thorne. still on VHS. Google Bella Thorne. You guys are such old men. Danny's Bo Derek. She's like 70. Hold on. I know. We're talking about the hottest shit. Evan Mendez, that's 50 a hot year. word. She said 50 years. Thorn? Is that her name? Yes. That's what he said. All right, hold Bella on here. Thorn. Hold on. She's dirty. She's dirty? <laughs> yes. How do you know this? Hold on, Steve. Hold TMZ on. tell you it? Hold on. Is this her right that's here? That's her right there. Is this her? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, you might be onto something there, buddy. Yeah. Steve goes, she's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> but look at that body. Yeah, she kind of looks like your wife a little bit. She's she's hard. She, well, but she's she's a little more curvy than. She looks Krista. like Marilyn Manson there. And she's <laughs> a Disney. <laughs> she's a Disney actress. Okay. And, uh, uh, that, now she's you know she directs, she produces, she does all kinds of stuff. Hold on, I'm finding, I'm finding uh, sexy pictures of her. Uh, no, I'm finding uh, Bo Derek from. Uh, uh, here you go. <laughs> Hold on, Dan. <laughs> Hold on, Dan. Really, there you go, oh, Dan. There you Dan, go, Dan. Really, Mama Are you Derek. fucking kidding me, Dan? Hold on. She's, She's 60, 63 And there. you said you said she looked good. At 50. It's so bad. Okay. At 50, she looked but, good. I mean, that's who you're going to pick. The one you, show me the pick. Show me the so pick. So you know who I go with, Steve? <laughs> Sophia Loren. Because she looked amazing until she was like she still 85. Looks good there with her. You guys are picking old ladies. It's nasty. Dude, she looks good there. He said, said she looks good there. Whatever. Here's mine. Hold on. I don't know if you guys remember. Hold oh, on. I know exactly. Oh, In I've fact, she's talked d- to d- her so many times. She, you know, she's dating the uh, TV's B with twenty five hundred bits. Look the, late guy, the late guy. The late guy. Are you fucking bits. kidding me? Wow, she's amazing. <clears throat> Are wow. you fucking kidding so me? Who's that? Yeah, Mink, that's, that's Mika Kelly. That's who she's dating. Yeah, up at the top now, the uh, talk show guy. Who's she dating the now? The black guy right there on the top row. This guy? Yes. Oh, the guy that oh, does Oh, uh, Trevor. Show? Yes. Oh, that guy's kind of got smooth. the that guy's uh, got the like it factor. He's, he's not that funny. Uh, uh, it, it kills oh, me to say. Huge. It kills me to say, but he's, he's got the fucking yeah, it. He's got yeah, the it factor. So, I can't stand yeah. non-citizens that's blacks on brunettes. That's commenting hot. on America. Blacks on brunettes. I mean, that's hot. Jay, She's this question goes over over to you. I just said it, Sophia Loren. Oh, Sophia oh my Loren. Gosh, uh, if it was a contemporary, if, like it was a contem- if it was a contemporary one, who's the girl from Wolf of Wall Street? Oh yeah, oh, okay. yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a good one. Here's Sophia Loren nowadays, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she's dead. She's dead. She look what she looked like. But what is that girl's name from Wolf like of Wall Street? Street. You know, oh. no, what was it? What was it? She was in that oh, one movie. She's the hottest, but then she kind of lost it. Who? Um, the girl from Wolf of Wall Street. Girl. Oh, from, yeah, she, yeah, she was um, really pretty. Danny, you're missing Big Red 20181 with a zillion fucking uh, subs, Danny. Jeez. 50 subs. I just saw it come up. Wow. Margo, oh, someone in the uh, in you, chat just said it. Margot Robbie. Uh, Margot fucking Robbie. Yes. Yeah, she was the pretty. The hot. Oh, yeah, she my was really pretty. lord. That, and then she kind of she kind of went. Yeah, she's, I think I, Lummy I, is dumb man with twenty five what thousand, thousand bits. Country girl ninety two. Country girl ninety two with eleven hundred bits. bits. Man, th- guys have been on. awesome. I think this is her. Me, uh, someone just said Mila Kunis. She's an awful. I don't woman. like Mila Kunis at all. She's not even in the same league as these people. This girl's <laughs> way hotter. I all mean, right. ten times. I used to think that um, Kate Moss was hot. I like that little, you know, she's all skinny. She but she's like, not an uh, actress. No. Oh, she's not an actress. She'd have to be an actress. Somalia. Yeah, you said actresses. You said right. actress? Now, hold on. Yeah. What, 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 as we're writing, wrapping this up, what's the maddest you've ever been at, 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 at well, at, you know, like Steve, you, ha- you have to a- answer for, you know, to Jay and to Dan, and then Dan, you, Steve, and Jay, and then, you know, obviously Jay, you, Dan, and, and Steve. The maddest I've been at my brother's. Yeah, let, like oh, let's let's God. pick let's pick Danny first. Oh, There's God. no way I'm gonna say that on air. Okay. No. Nope. <clears throat> well, then no we all know what that one way. is, brother. Okay. But I'll but, say no, this. Hold on. How about maddest arable? Um, the maddest I arable. <laughs> I mean, uh, Dan slept with one of my girlfriends. At the red. <laughs> <laughs> you showed him that before the end of today, though. He's got to see it. Dan, you slept with one of his girls. Yeah, his girlfriend was afterwards. Jay did that to me too once. How long? No, no, I, I don't. And I, I don't want to get into time frames or. De- I don't want to say. Uh, and I've stayed away from all of that because Romina true. flipped out. But I did have like, who's got the biggest penis? And have you guys ever slept with each other's? You know, uh, each other, no. other, 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 <laughs> no. tossed away girlfriends. 
and things like that. But There's you know, just a little bit of that. Right. Right. Very, li- very little of it. Toss 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 very little toss aways. I think yeah. there's been a few of them. Uh, so now, how about how about <laughs> Jay? Can on. can you talk about the maddest you've ever been mad at Jay? Um, when he said that I couldn't have property in Costa Rica. Oh, I remember he that. Owned the country. He, he banned me from buying a property. I found a, a wonderful there. place. Okay, you know everything in my life. <laughs> is, as you know, everything in my life is done you you calculated. Know, well, it, no, it's all done by consensus. It's the Diaco consensus. Is this okay? This is good for the family. This is not good for the family. I found one thing in, in the world: a little place in Costa Rica with pity and my friends. And it was my Your little escape. Your own little deal. My own little escape. And so Stephen falls in love with it, and he's going to go buy a house a block away from me that I got to drive by to get to the beach. <laughs> Fuck no! I saw the quote. The, the quote that he loved is, "I said that's my respite." So I hear all the time from Stephen, "How's your respite?" Uh, he banned me from ownership. <laughs> now, Steve, the how did that? How did that conversation go? I said, no, "I got so a condo." Bad. I literally got a contract. I negotiated it. I was so excited. I came running to Jay. I'm like, Jay, I have some great news. I got a condo right down the street, and it's beautiful. Like that. And he's like, what? You can't do that. And I was like, I said, go to some other country. <laughs> he fuck like, but he what? put a flag in Costa Rica and claimed and, it for himself. And he literally made me withdraw the contract, and, and my dream was shattered into a thousand did you go down, pieces. Did you go tell Krista, and she was mad, too? You know, the truth is, okay, so I, my feelings were hurt at the time, and I did respect his wishes, and it was, I mean, it's not, I mean, that big a deal in the end. Do you but, have a place there whenever you want? But years later, <laughs> years later, he did invite me to buy, like, a whole huge area down there, and I am always welcome at his homes, and, and candidly, I don't know that I could do the trips without him. He really is that wired in, and he really is more, you know, aware of his you know, environment. He's just better at now, it. Now, Dan, me. have you ever gone to the to Jay's place in Costa? Oh, uh, Jay has w- uh, without Jay. No. We're not allowed. That's <laughs> not a rule. No, he's, he's We're not allowed to invite as long as he's there. Okay. Uh, so yeah. that's fine. Yeah, you know, I mean, because you know, Costa Rica is, is, is you know, it's a strange country. You kinda I've been gotta there a few know your, times. You, you, you gotta he's know kind of the around. mayor of his own little area there. He has it so dialed in and you know, it's it's really, really, really hard to have his good experience without Jay there because he has all the connections. Right. They all know him. He is like the little honorary mayor of his little town. They and call I know him like all C- the conditions. Grande. I know all the conditions for all the different breaks and so when you come there it's like a true vacation. You should come with us sometime, Bob. Without too. having to surf, you would just relax and unwind me and, Jimmy and unplug. Clevis, me Jimmy, and Jimmy actually Cle- said he wants to come. Me and Jimmy Clevis went to Costa Rica one time, just him and I. Whoa, do I got some stories on that one. Well, my <laughs> place is a little different <laughs> yeah. than where you guys went. Ah, Jimmy. Oh Jimmy. My God, Jimmy. I'm like, Jimmy, please. Let and me, his I new, got, by the way, new baby girl, Valentina. 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 She's, She's so adorable. beautiful. And, and his kid's tall as I am. Good looking kid, And his kid's a fucking stud. His son, he's already got mat time. Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy sent me a picture of when he was one. He said he's already got daily mat time. He's gonna yeah. be like the the, the, uh, the movie Three Hundred, where the kids are like he's like fight ready to fight so, at seven. Yeah. And by the way, this is the uh, state of the Diacos. A few more questions, and we'll be done at top of the hour. Uh, Dan, what's the maddest that arable? What's the maddest arable that you've been at Steve and or Jay? And 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 if we can't, you it, don't want, get your don't get yourself in trouble. I'm not going to. Um, I think the mess I've gotten at those guys was when it was in 2013 and when all the, all the shit was hitting the fan <laughs> and those motherfuckers gave me the hand. Jay specifically put his hand up and said, listen, I gave him the Heisman. The fuck you're talking about. I was like, Hold I'm on like, a sec. We're talking whoa, law whoa, here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? What? I can't participate in this conversation because I'm not a lawyer. And so that's when I decided to go to law school. I mean, there's a lot of other reasons, too, but right. that right there, I'm like, fuck these guys. And he didn't tell us, Bubba, until he was waiting to find out if he got into Stetson. Yeah. Right. I did it all We're quietly. in Ocean City, and he's like, I find out today if I get into Stetson. And, and Steve you're like, and what I the are fuck are like, what are you about? fucking talking about? You and you hold on. Jay, they were mad. Jay, did you and it's Steve a, have a little no. sidebar and go, look at this motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little you know, bit. actually, at the time, <laughs> we had that big, massive uh, firm, and Steve and I both say, I don't know where he thinks he's going to get a yeah. job. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Did, did Jay go, hey, Steve, you think this motherfucker, weren't, uh, Rob's not going to, uh, Rob Adams ain't going to let him fold us up into this motherfucker. Yeah. Rob Adams is going to flip the fuck out. That You're ain't gonna, happening with Rob Adams. Yeah. Good luck on being with, <laughs> Stroll you know, yeah, Exactly. All right. So, and then St- uh, Jay, uh, arable. The most mad that you've been, if you can talk about. Of course I can. Um, you probably can't really talk about no, them. I, I, got a, I got a couple. So the <laughs> one with Danny was when we, I turned 18, graduated my senior year, and we go on this blitzkrieg of Europe, this bus tour. 
<laughs> and we're in, was it Austria did or, or Holland? Germany. Uh, it depends. Uh, we had a lot of stories so from that trip. We were literally we every scrapping country. the whole time the we 3D Ocos throughout Europe. fought everywhere. And so Stephen and Danny had a fight with brushes where they both came out of it looking like Bruce Lee with all the cuts all over him. It was incredible. So Danny's taunting me, and I'm just a little kid, and, and I'm like, you know, fuck you. And I throw up my foot to, like, kick him, and he grabs my heel, and he throws it to the sky, and I fall right on my fucking face. And open. I was so mad in that moment, Danny. That still bothers me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and then Steven was, we were having an argument. And Farrokes. he ripped my shirt open, the buttons right off <laughs> my fucking Steve is shirt. violent. He yes. ripped the buttons right off. He opened my shirt up. Rip! And these buttons if, came fucking flying off. Out of all you, is Steve the handsiest when it comes to putting hands on somebody? No, we don't put hands on each other anymore. Bullshit, that stopped you know. about No, that stopped about 15 years no, no, ago. No, I mean, I'm not talking about as now, but like when you were growing up, yes. it sounds like Steve was whipping the most ass. Like, no, he was the first one to, to throw the hands on, and then I don't know that it always worked his way. In hindsight, I looked at a couple of videos, and I guess Danny was much stronger than I remember, because I saw a video recently of us fighting on the beach, and Danny schooling Steven in a way that I don't ever remember happening, but in hindsight... I guess was always so much stronger, bigger than him. We had you know, to team so, up on yeah. him, didn't we, Steve? It was yeah, like we would do the double hard. tag. We would and do Danny tag up on also, him. like, like I, I'll give you an example of why Danny gave me respect. So, yes, he was stronger. Yes, he could beat me up. He bullied me like any big brother would. But he knew if I got really pissed, it was on. And, like, and plus he had to go to sleep. Yes, what, 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 like Dad gave us boxing gloves. <laughs> no, but you, uh, I don't know. Oh, I get him. You're right. Uh, you're right. right. Steven would get your you I'm saying. I and, may win and, the battle, but Steven would win the and war. Knowing, and knowing you guys as well as I do, here's what the common denominator with you, Steve, is this. Your brothers would be like, yeah, we may have got one over on Steve, but that motherfucker is the most non-forgetful, yep. always keeping Elf score. Long memory. He yeah. would stay up for hours upon hours just so you would fucking, so he I could would... strangle you while you're sleeping. Yeah. They had rules yeah. like that. Like no, if, but... if you accidentally hit somebody in the face, you got a face shot back. That's true. Okay? Yeah. And no so, balls, no face. So, so, but an example with Danny and I was, dad gave us boxing gloves one year. And so we were in the garage and we're boxing with gloves and Danny is just... Pummeling you. Pummeling me. And he's just like, like now it's, you know, I'm, I'm clearly like, can't even defend myself. And he's just lighting me up. And I was really upset. And I just remember when you untied the gloves with your teeth. Yes. You know, that's what you do. I just undid them and whipped them off and punched them as hard as I could in the face with my bare fist, you know? And so that was the last time we boxed. And Boom, he had, hey, I went down on the knee because he almost knocked me out. <laughs> and then I chased him around the neighborhood for literally an hour. And I couldn't catch a little fuck. Right? <laughs> I was so <laughs> mad. I, remember, yeah. I was fucking Phoenix so circle, pissed. Right? I chased yes. him for Phoenix a circle. fucking hour. Yes. Yes. He ran and ran and ran and laughed and ran and laughed. And I wanted to fucking kill That may have been the maddest I've ever been that at him. That is right there, that, Danny. When he broke my windshield and I slammed his head on the ground. Yeah. Those are two of the maddest I've ever been at him. So, so uh, Steve, this is what you're not up to speed with. This commercial was cut... <laughs> This in two thousand and in two thousand and eight, okay, <laughs> and it, and it's and it's in from a place in North Carolina, and it it it's you know it was about white people and black people being able to go to the same house of the same place and buy furniture, okay, okay, and, this is a real commercial, and, 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 and Stephen, this is a real commercial, and it's so fucking bad that it might be the most brilliant thing I've ever seen in my life, and. It, the the two people that wrote it are the two guys that are singing the jingle throughout there. They're the people that made this thing. And so when you hear us just arbitrarily out of nowhere, at the Red House. This is what oh. we're talking about, and I want to play it for you. It's going to be on the screen right now. Here we go. Okay. We all cool. just get along at the Red House Furniture. We, we can. can. At the Red and by the way, Jay, this is—I mean, Steve, this is a real. This is a real place. Like this is a. This is a real. It's still. A, it's, it's still brilliant. in business today. I love the ties. It, Look how one yeah. super long, super short. <laughs> yeah. Super short. <laughs> These are awesome. Here we go. And it's still in business today. <laughs> I'm Richard, aka Big Head. I work at the Red House. At the Red. I like pumping iron and pumping furniture into people's homes. <laughs> he missed the part where he said I'm black. Now now watch watch how uncomfortable his shake looks with this white girl. AKA T engage. I work at the Red House and I'm white. I like deer hunting, bass fishing, and extending credit to all people. <laughs> <laughs> at 
off the rim. And he's shaking a black guy's hand with a glove on. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm black and I love the red house. I'm white and I love the red house. <laughs> I'm a black woman and I love With the African design. <laughs> the red house. I am white and the red house is for me. <laughs> At the red house. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, and by the way, Steve, this is a real commercial. It's, it's the best. best. Look at the sofa. It's perfect for a black person or a white person. <laughs> this mattress is perfect for a white person or a black person. <laughs> red house, where black people and white people buy furniture. Now watch. <laughs> and Hispanic people too. <laughs> what about the Asians? That's oh, amazing. Is that not the oh. best? Fucking the best. commercial is really brilliant. Ever made. Really, everybody should see That's that so at funny. this time too, man. Can we all get it, along? It really, it really is. You yeah. know, the politician that came out with that type of fucking deal would win it all, would he not? All of oh it, because really everybody does love each other. It's just so much crap. It's just, it's just, it's just straight bullshit. I mean, you're right the on. only one that's met with. Although I did uh, sit with Donald Trump at Howard Stern's wedding, uh, <clears throat> I got to give the following people some huge, huge, huge donations tonight. Yes. Um, we peep, we pave, we seal, uh, slamming Phoebe's beef. Lummy uh, is dumb, man. Country girl 92. Blitz, I don't have the PayPal amounts, but I know you do. If you could give me uh, some of the big swingers over there. Okay. And I know like uh, Big Red donated a lot of subs. And and yes. subs as well. Yes. yes. Subs. Thank you, everybody. Awesome, Thank you, guys. I, you know, I did a very lackluster job of calling out the bits, but no, you didn't. I tried. You did good. Country I'm girl so, 92, the real Florida Stanley, Dingleberry Stink. Dude Wears My Ham, uh, Airtight Ski Pole, Caviar Tacos, all Brandon the Quads in there. And then again, Blitz, we had a ton of subs from, I think, Big Red. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to and think. And thank you, JJ, for my sub. And thank, and thank you for, for Dan's sub uh, as well. More importantly, uh, guys, thank you for coming in on your, on your Friday. It was fun. It I was think, a lot of fun, guys. I think Hemingway Cat Blitz might have been the number one guy on the subs. Uh, is, that, is that? Okay, I didn't know they did it any. Oh, I, thought, I didn't uh, see Hemingway Cats. Oh, you're right. I'm wrong. You're right. I'm wrong. I, that was I, the I, I got the wrong. clusterfuck show. Dan, why would you even say that, Dan? I'm sorry. They ended up. Just, just yeah. when he, we, 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 he, we, we tell him that he's the fucking smartest, he's an angel with his hands, and then he pulls some fucking rook move like that. It's and okay, Dan. Donna Waters' mouth pot just threw in another thousand bits. Hell nice. yeah! <laughs> Steven, it's good to get you. Uh, these two jokers come in all the time, but Steve, it's good to get We have to do this more often because you know I got a ton of questions. I got a lot to shot that Romina shot down right out of the fucking box. <laughs> Dan, I thought That's Romina fun. would be one of the coolest, and she ended up showing her ass tonight. Nope. Ramina, I've been pulling for your tent still. <laughs> yes. I have, Steve. Have I not been you pulling have. the I've been pulling You're the hardest for your tent. both of us. God damn it, Ramina. <laughs> <laughs>